don't know. If Dallas has everything he's done, his... Well, he can probably do the rest, but we're figuring out later. All right, we're going. Hello, Internet. Welcome back to The Sprawl. I tried to think what a cyberpunk voice would be, but other than doing my, I'm in, hacker voice. I was literally just about to go, we're in the name. The Sprawl. I don't know if that really works. Smoker, also, I don't the, want to do the, that too much. Uh, cyberpunk voice is Smoker Batman. Where are the drugs going? Sorry, wait. Where are the cyber drugs downloading? <laughs> no, no, no. It's got to be Stoner Batman, so you have to be like, where are they? Anyway, uh, my Sorry. limited vocal range aside, we're playing the Sprawl again. I won't say for the last time, because as usual, this is almost assuredly going to be divided between legwork and action. So there's going to be two sessions of this. But uh, as evidenced by the fact that, one, it's been about a year, and over a year, technically. Uh, last October is when I published the last one, so, you know, 13 months. Uh, but also, uh, as as evidenced, as several of the, the characters were uh, digging into their, or the players were digging into their character sheets again, and Dallas had to remake his, uh, some of y'all are running out, of, running out of room in your character sheets for stuff, so... We're, I had to we're, transfer we're... it from my old computer to my new one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're approaching the uh, the limits of the system. So. So uh, we'll probably be switching to our Genesis hack before a two, a two long. But for now, it's the Sprawl. And before we get into the Sprawl, this episode is brought to you by our Cyber Patrons. Andrew Hardbuggers, Doji, Call Me Zed, Carlos Dragon, Fight Your Jerry Vasquez, JDV9000, Just the Fade, John Sandoval, Castrello, Legendary Boss Hunter, Hunter Liam Kester, Regent Raptor, Rise of Kenji, Rogue Robin, Shard War, Shun Prior, Some Guy Named Bob, and Varian the Crow. If you like we do, must use do more. Consider supporting us on Patreon and get access to visits early and lots of other goodies. Thank you for your support. Also, now I've just realized that I, I after the episode is done, I got to try and do the edit fast and remind Lucky to upload it immediately. Maybe we can have this go live on Cyber Monday. That'll be funny. <laughs> Aaron chuckled. <laughs> That's all I need. We're good. Anyway, the sprawl, the sunny neon lit, probably super mega hot. You're dying a little bit. Well, we're all dying a little bit every day, don't you know? Uh, I was about the... you beat me to it. <laughs> well, we're all in the right mindset then. Um, in the the Bay Mega City around the San Francisco Bay, the air tastes like recycled salt and scrubbed smog, and the ground tastes like wet concrete. Why are you tasting the ground? I don't know. You never know when but... the ground's just going to come up and smack you. You do never know. But it's been a number of months since your last gig together as a crew. You've been laying low. Uh, you d were kind of part of a weird attack on a courthouse last time. Oh, yeah. There was some shooting and some stuff. I think Claymore was throwing riot control grenades. Was that our last one? I thought our last one was when we just, like, murdered a bunch of people. I mean, Claymore was involved, so you're always murdering lots of people. But no, no, the... like the the. I, the thought, our, I thought our last one was the action was, film. Yeah, was the attack we did on the was it Northwest Industries? Yeah. No, no, that was two jobs ago. Oh, the court the, the, was the lawyer job that. was was after that one. Oh, that's right. Okay. We had to um. Yeah. All right, now I remember. Yeah, we had to either get enough evidence to get this guy on or off or something. I can't remember. Yeah, I literally we were defending and you guys. Had to we work just... Shut up the courthouse. Heavily, oh, uh, was it a, us a, that did all the shooting? A black bag team came in to there was, there's, fuck yeah, things there's up. Some weird back and forth and stuff. You you guys managed to resolve it, but yes, like I said, I'm 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 pretty sure it involved Claymore throwing like CS gas and you know punching people or hitting them with a machete or whatever. Yeah, I definitely some gas. do not remember. Well, luckily, uh, it was preserved for all time on the internet, but also it was once again. Those were all published in, like, last October, or two Octobers ago, I should say, because it's November, so it's okay if you don't recall. Anyway, that probably brought a lot of heat that you guys had to lay a little low. Some of you have been working on some stuff. You know, you've been uh, uh, buying exotic new guns. Uh, you know, I've God knows what else you've been doing with your advancements because it's been 12 months. Uh, Wolf has probably been in, you know, the bamboo groves hitting dummies with his sword whatever he does in his spare time 
but at least according to my notes, uh, I'm some part of that job. Uh, Odin, you were able to finally clock off your owned tag. So you you have uh, in in some capacity managed to, to to buy off your new old boss, Devin Dickla, the VP of Asset Investigations at Cross Nexus. Uh, and so you you've been avoiding moonlighting for a little bit, trying to play it cool. Uh, but one day, you know, as as you're you're going home from the cube, you've had another boring day filling out sheets, actuary tables. You know, staring at the locker where you keep your rifle, wondering when you can get some range time in. Uh, you get a little ping on your private holophone. It's from Devin. Uh, and uh, you've done work for him in, you know, a moonlighting capacity before. So he, he basically says, you know, in text form, <coughs> uh, assemble your crew and uh, meet me, you know, sure, why not, tonight at 3 a.m. Uh, down in Oakland, uh, going to the Latin Quarter. He wants you to go to a cantina known as the Pequena Mula. Uh, I don't remember exactly what Pequena Mula transport uh, translates to, because I wrote this twelve months ago. <laughs> I know that it has mule in it. Is it the little mule? Maybe. Uh, yeah, it would be the uh, little mule. Okay, thank you, Dallas. Because I know Pekina is little. Yeah, so yeah, it's the little mule. Uh, oh, also I should say, uh, we're not being joined by uh, Squirrel on this job. I uh, invited Marth, but he yeah, said he hasn't really yeah. been feeling tabletop lately, and uh, he did not show up to the day. So, And he is aware we're here, because he typed some stuff earlier, so I assume he is out. So you'll be uh, going without your uh, drive man. Uh, assume he has some uh, personal business to take care of, either with uh, his, you know, intimate, his NPC that he's supposed to, you know, protect and look after at all costs, or uh, his vengeful, that NPC who's trying to uh, rustle his jimmies at all costs. Squirrel's a busy man. He thought he'd be good paying jobs at least, so he's probably going to balance things out. Yeah. But yeah, so, Odin, you are, you know, told... To, to assemble the crew, you know, 3 a.m. tonight, go to the the Pequena Mula, and uh, I, Dick was got a little bit of a job for you. I think Odin has each, I think, a different message service and other way to contact each one of them, because each one of them have very different circles. Yeah, fair enough. I think Claymore, he just, I think, literally just gives an email that just, like, it's almost like a random spam job notice. I was like, oh, it's fucking FT again. No, Claymore would have a, a phone number you can call. It's just not one. It's one that changes every so often. Oh, fair. You probably send updates. Yeah. <sighs> basically, just imagine it's basically every job um, Claymore um, just, you know, destroys his old phone, gets gets a new one, and sends everyone number. Hey, did Claymore. Okay. So, uh, he probably sent you a recorded message of uh, where to be and delete it five minutes later. At the very end. Uh, Wolf, I think, just gets a message of being like, uh, show up around here, we got it. We got a job around here. And uh, for Metatron, I think it's just a... Uh, Hi, uh, we're doing another thing. Come here. Well, how are you contacting me? That's the what I'm curious about. Uh, it's probably one of those VPN TechNet messages. I know for a fact Metatron's definitely used burner phones before in this scenario, so... Uh, yeah. No, there's a way. Uh, but if you try and contact... Because you, uh, both you and Claymore, I believe, have uh, the number of my personal uh, server. Uh, if you've tried to call that at all... It, it something's wrong with it. I'm gonna be real. I can't remember how we did a lot of stuff. I'm gonna be real. It's been a while. Well, I have a communication server in my head. Yeah. I just go for the list of things. I probably just go for the list of things. Uh, and.
And also, uh, Odin, uh, Dicka would have given you a little bit of a brief on, on like, what the setup is. Because, like I said, you're not owned anymore. So, technically, like, mechanically, he doesn't really have anything on you. But he basically, it's the, the frame of the text is, like, you know, how do you phrase it? It's been a while since I've done this NPC, but it's, you know, you know, you've, you've been a, 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 a a diligent worker, lots of corpo speak, you know, really nose to the grindstone kind of a thing. And uh been 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 working hard, so uh you know, you're you're I don't know if we we wouldn't call it corporate debt. Your back pay issue all one word back pay uh is resolved if you just help me out with this one last big thing. So kind of kind of phrasing it as the old, you know, one last big job. All right, so all the rest of you get these various audio or text messages. And mm -hmm. uh, I assume you will make your way to Oakland. <laughs> it's kind of how he was like some part of it is like... <laughs> I laughed. Okay, you, you fixed it, but when you said seniority, I just like immediately thought Spanish guitars. <laughs> uh, wrong senor. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I'm probably the closest to Oakland. I think. I don't know California geography to save my life. So, mm. so basically, the, the way the Bay Mega City works is it's like a diamond. Uh, you know, San Fran is the the yeah. east corner. There's North Bay at the north, uh, Silicon Valley, formerly San Jose, is at the south, and then Oakland is the Sorry, San Fran is the west. Oakland is the east side. Yeah, Oakland's east. Um, so, depending on where you guys are, are coming from, from where you've been laying low, uh, I'm pretty sure we've said Metatron, you know, I'm, lives in Orange. I'm based Valley, in... So. No, I'm based in Orange. Hmm? Which is kind of the middle, so... And, of course, with Mega City Sprawl, it's a lot of... It's, it's, it's a lot of it's just, you know, kind of gooped and smeared together. Well, yeah. Uh, Claymore's growing up. Obviously, it's not uh, called orange anymore, I would assume. Probably. What are we saying? Uh, Claymore. Claymore's uh, stomping grounds and hiding grounds is probably in the Pacific Northwest, probably what, what we call it, the SeaTac Mega City. Yes. So he'll probably have to take some sort of futuristic quick travel. Like, I know we. You can catch the maglev loop. There's a, yeah. there's a commuter maglev that runs the whole up and down. Yeah. And uh, Oakland is a major rail hub, so perf. Yep. Yeah, Wolf would just have to head across the bay to get to Oakland. It's kind of a freight capital of California. Very easy to do, also, to, to cross the bay, either by ferry or by many, many bridges. Or take the BART. Yeah. Bay Area Rapid Transit, they're still, you know... Oh, wait, never mind, I'm the farthest. I forgot. I, I mixed up Oakland and a different city. Yeah, Oakland is north of, uh, almost north of San Francisco. It's to the east of San Francisco, technically. Oh yeah. North of North Freeman, Fremont. Well, wait, it's like adjacent to San Francisco, essentially. Yes. Yeah. It's the the city basically forms a giant ring around the bay, yeah. and so you forgot. Uh, I'm nearer San Diego than San Francisco. Right. Sorry, I can get there. You all arrive, yes. Uh, any, you know, particular notes about how anybody arrives? Anybody got any, you know, new vehicles they've got in their back pocket? No. I'm, I'm pretty sure Metatron has explicitly bought a shitty burner car before. I mean, no, I arrived by private uh, plane. <laughs> Gonna paratrop in? It's not my private plane. Uh... No. Uh, I'm just visiting the city of um, uh, probably of San I'm probably visiting San Francisco. And then I buy a shitty burner. You're not fucking you driving know. six hours. Are you kidding me? All right. But you all turn up in Oakland in the Latin Quarter. So this is a, this is a refuge hood that is leans more to uh, citizens who are of a Hispanic, you know, origin. Some of whom are, have been, you know, 
locals for a long time and just can't move out of the refuge hood. Others are actual refugees from the uh, the various border wars that have gone on, as you know, uh, Texas did expand across the Mexican border into Ciudad Juarez, and there's uh, lots of other fighting going on along that, you know, north edge. So a lot of people relocated to deep in Pacifica, where it's generally considered to be safe. So uh, I believe Axe probably looks the most out of place as the group's resident white person. No, no. I mean, Odin's Odin's code name is Odin, but his uh, he's Japanese. Yeah, real his real name involves oh, a, a Japanese surname. Yeah. Okay. I might be pale, but he's not that white. Okay, uh, you're also, you know, given the the way this all works out, uh, you guys are both simultaneously out of place and not out of place, as you guys kind of like probably have like the pre-team meetup outside the cantina. Uh, you know, you, you guys get ready to go in. Uh, you can see there's a couple of uh, a couple of guys who are dressed in like full samurai style regalia, like you know, kimono, hakama pants. Uh, but they're wearing cowboy boots with spurs and cowboy hats. And instead of it. katanas at their hip, they have revolvers. Uh, and they appear to be getting ready to uh, do 10 paces in turn. As you guys, uh, you know, usher yourselves inside. <laughs> Is one of them a robot? No, sadly. Damn it. But all right, inside the uh, the Pecanamula, there's a, a, a you know s slightly rude neon cartoon of a of a mule on the the sign, probably kicking something or somebody. Uh, but you go inside. There's you know cheap synthesized music, you know blaring, uh, blended from a variety of different Latin genres, just all over the place. Uh, you guys can smell the home cooked bar food as you walk in. Uh, you know, is it is it actually ground beef? Well, you're not sure because that would be pretty expensive, but it smells like ground beef. You know, somebody's got some some jalapenos. Having tacos at three a.m. Yeah, that's life. That hurt my <laughs> soul. <laughs> Sorry, that's why I said it that way. <laughs> But yeah, so, um, and, uh, you know, it also has an uh, a, an undercurrent of uh, cheap tequila and stale beer. Hey, tequila. Yeah, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, you see Devin Dickla sitting at the bar. I believe I've previously described him as basically uh, dressing kind of like Hunter S. Thompson. Um, he's got a cigarette and a holder. He's wearing a super loud, like, Hawaiian-type shirt. Um, he is wearing two watches. He has, uh, smart specs wrap-around AR sunglasses that are, uh, like, mirrored aviator shades. Uh, wearing cargo pants and, like, you know... Nah, this guy... This, this guy's a decently high-ranked corpo. He can be dressed as ugly as he likes. He's wearing Crocs. <laughs> I thought this was a guy, I thought this was a guy on style, like, decades ago. He doesn't care. They're comfy. Um, he would normally have like a, a fishing hat or a bucket hat, but he's you know taking it off. Close cropped hair. Uh, he he's got you know uh, a tumbler of 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 tequila. He gestures for for you four guys to sit. Green fresh, then business. Mm -hmm. Plus. Want anything? My turn. Uh, uh, Claymore uh, calls out, uh, let him get two, uh, two shots of tequila, a lime, a plate of salt, and whatever the hell is on those in those tacos. Yeah, oh, uh, sure. he, he, you know, um, belts out something in in Spanish. Yeah, no, this this is they're serving bar food. Yeah. Okay, then yeah, no, Metatron will definitely get a water and some tacos. Yep. Again, uh, I you do not you. This is a refuge hood. You do not know what is in the tacos. This is why I get the tequila. It tastes kind of like ground beef. 
Listen. The trick is you take a bite, you take a shot of the tequila, what the tequila will kill whatever's in the fucking uh, meat. It's perfect. Metatron cannot legally buy alcohol. That's fair, but you're undercover, so Listen, um, are they gonna card you here? I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, but he no, Metatron is so used to not being able to order alcohol, he doesn't consider it. Ah. Uh, Alright. Uh we'll say they're nice and they get you like a bottled water. Because once again, even uh even though uh uh it's been a year, uh Metatron is still only twenty. Yeah, we've we've I don't think we've we've solidified the, the timeline, so yeah, I don't know if you would be twenty one yet. But yeah, they get you a bot they're nice and get you a bottle of water. Because I don't think you'd want the tap water in, in a place like this. Wolf order a Pacifica sunrise. Of course. Fancy drinks. I'll just get some water. I try not to eat after one AM. Try not to eat after one AM? I would say something, but I realize that you wouldn't get that reference. Odin's only like thirty. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. You, you were young when the when the Singularity War was happening. So, yeah. Devin Dicka, who is somewhere in his thirties to forties, probably, um, you know, he 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 probably starts to to claim more the visibly oldest of you and says, "You remember that one movie, the little guys." Don't feed him after midnight. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah, from the rena horror renaissance. Uh, Claymore, you know, takes a moment, looks up, and is just all, uh, what was that? Gremlins? Yeah, that was it. Gremlins. Gremlins, yeah, yeah. Never get them wet, don't feed him after midnight. Anyway. All right. Well, okay. We've had drinks, we've had food. Let's go to a ticket booth. So, you sit in a booth. The seats are made of synth leather. They are very sticky. But also somehow very squeaky. How do they do that? Squeaky sticky. Great secret. Uh, Claymore does not sit. He um, just kind of leans up against where everyone's sitting and, you know, eyes at the room. Mm-hmm. Conveniently stands next to the jukebox, maybe gives it a little punch. Mm -hmm. Starts it starts playing Spanish fly. <laughs> uh Dickla will, you know, uh put out his his the the remnants of his first cigarette, light up a new one, stick it in the holder. He will offer a, a you know, a light to any of you if you wanna, you know, smoke up. Claymore will smoke up. Alright. Uh he's a corpo, so this is, you know, uh real tobacco. Uh, a machine actually uh, rolled this into shape. It is not rolled by hand. But yeah, so uh, he basically says, well, uh, I don't remember strike you as being uh, a little overly generous, but uh, this is a big job. I'm gonna close out here. You know, Jet gives a gives a nod, tip of his glasses towards Odin. We're, uh, we're working on closing accounts. Basically, I need you to do a little uh, transporting, but it's a little unusual. So, here's how it'd be. Uh, the company is authorizing a shipment from a wealthy private individual. They, uh, this private individual is doing this through the company. But it would be better if our books didn't acknowledge what's in the shipment. Uh, the client has the cash and the capital to uh, to front the extra bill for such a uh, private affair. Thus, freelance. Now, uh, the short version of this job is uh, re real short. It's very simple. You're going to get a package. You're going to get a train car. Train car is going to be on a, on the maglev line to Vegas Mega City. I'm going to cross the mountains in the desert. Vegas. Yep. Uh, for those of you who have not taken uh, that route anytime soon and not familiar with your maglev tables, 
uh, depending on you know local weather and traffic congestion, you're looking at two or three hours by maglev. Also, yes, that is judging by speeds of modern maglev trains. If you had a line that ran from the San Francisco Bay to Las Vegas, it would take you about two hours by maglev train. He's accounting for you know traffic and stuff because it's probably not a direct line. There's mountains in your way. So, not a big window, but big enough for something. You'll be running through the desert and mountains mostly. Way away from city security. Nothing but packed flats, mountains, rocks, nomads. Nothing. There'll be a small handful of normal cross-nexus security on the, on the maglev. And there'll probably be some private security for other shipments and people on the train. But they're not going to have the same agenda as y'all, so. Just want to keep that in mind. It's very simple. Got the package. Now, the car will be empty except for the package by default. So, uh, hopefully you guys can find something to uh, gussy up the shipment, make it a little look a little less suspicious. You know, but if you got anything you need to move to Vegas, couch, car, whatever... Load on the car. Job ends when you drop us off to Vegas and the client gets his package. And I'm not afraid to tell you that uh, anything you need, you be sure to tell me. Or uh, he, you know, slips, uh, probably slips Odin a data shard. Or uh, these contact deets. Because uh, if this job goes well, you were looking at the future senior vice president of asset management. My uh, senior assistant, Victoria Lestrange, will be moving into my current position. That's her contact info on the shard. So anything, you know, you need to take care of, let me know. And so if you've got any questions about the job, now's your time to ask. Well, the one question I want to ask, you told us not to ask, so. Oh, well, which thing is that? What are we transporting? I mean, his official response would be, don't know, don't care, didn't ask. Well, then, yeah, I don't have any questions. I guess you're, question. uh, you're not being paid to look in the crate. So, uh, if I understand this, he wants us to basically, like, so we're we're going on a, um, So we're going on a a train, but it's a public train. Well, is it a public train or a private train? It's public. Uh, basically, your client is uh, the true client is rich enough to pay for a single whole car. So you guys basically have a box car all to yourselves. Okay. Uh, but there will be other cars uh, in there. You can probably, if you wanted to ask him about like what, you know, what kind of composition the train that that the car is booked under you've got he can answer that or you could also just do research later yeah if we can get any details on what ki what kind of train it is and we'll probably have to do research we can research the route later but no oh, actually we... claim where you want to you want to ask him you can no actually no we can just i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure they don't have crazy differentiation trains on certain things we can probably look up the train easily enough same with the routes, and then we can check. Um, potential hazards and or problems. Nah, I don't think I have anything. Everything I got is for after we get done with this. Uh, Wolf Odin, any questions for the job man? Anyone who expect to interfere? Mm, at the moment. We're hoping that subtlety is our win out, but that does mean you may have to deal with uh, regular shenanigans. I know those dirty rustlers have been causing problems out in the canyons, and I haven't tried to roll a maglev yet, but it's the first time for everything. Kind of, you know, pointed look around the room at all of you. I assume you gentlemen are all perfectly equipped to deal with such a situation, however. That is what you are going to do. Yeah, we've dealt with those idiots before. Or 
pretty sure we should be able to deal with them. Those are the guys we keep, like, destroying, right? Yeah, I think you've beat them up a couple of times. They're, uh, they're like a, 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 a cowboy and car-themed gang out in the canyons. They, they focus on, like, you know, chop shopping, car theft, knocking over cargo drones and auto trucks. Uh... Uh, during the canyon job, I think you blew up like three or four pickup trucks worth of them. I also cut one of them in half. I do remember that. That also probably happened. We I, we juggled a rocket launcher around a few times. Yeah, that was at least one of the blow ups. I, you know, knowing yeah. us and it had been so long, Claymore may have jumped into one of their pickup trucks and just you know beat them all to death. I don't know. Okay, no, I, and now our memory is starting back to me. I remember how I got around. I have a motorcycle. Ah, you have a motorcycle, that's right. I just remember uh, one of the first jobs I think Owen had of Herbert Claymore was uh, Claymore was uh, assigned to rob a train. <laughs> I think it was your backstory, yeah. But all right, okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, then we can move on to getting the job. I'm good, I can't think. Okay, all right. Uh, well, Odin, you were the one who was pitched this job, so I will be nice, and uh, you should roll to get the job. Technically, it I doesn't have, usually you know... anyway, is the soldier. Yeah. I should be having a little more fiction first and have, like, you know, uh, Odin initiate, but uh, one, I, I want to move on to legwork, and uh, two, I have to tip and this. I rolled a seven, so that's a ten, so I'm going to pick four. Yes, you're good at this. Professionalism. Uh, while you're thinking about this, I'm just gonna pause the audio and be right back, actually. Burb, gang. Burb. Alright, let's see. Uh... <clears throat> I'm gonna do the thing of we didn't attract attention. It pays well. Question is, uh, Intel and gear, which one do you want to switch around for being the employer's identifiable afterwards or not? I'm good with whatever you decide. It's going to be here. It's right. Huh. What is it? All right, Mark XP. <laughs> I'm not going to bother marking experience because this character is this is my character's last job. Oh, for me, uh, yeah. Well, I assume I think most of you guys are carrying your character over, right? Yeah. 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 I think I'm the only one that's switching people. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. All right. So you guys have the directives, which also, by the way, means you've accepted the mission, Mark XP. Um, we were just talking about that, and I was just saying, I was like, I didn't bother because uh, this is this character's last mission. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. We might level up and things. So just one for accepting the job, then. Yep. Righto. And then, Odin, what do you pick from the list for your stuff? Does it attract attention? It pays well. Uh, we get useful information. I don't think identifiable applies because we already met him. No, no. You don't know who the true employer is. Yeah. This is it was the just the middleman. Middle yeah. Actually, then I want that one as well. I don't need, okay. We don't need the gear one. Fair enough. All right. All right, so pays well, doesn't attract attention. You get intel, and you get to know the employer. All right. Uh, and I should really quit. Now that it, hey, again, Omega. super matters? Yeah, what's up? Oh, uh, we forgot to do some stuff. Oh, yeah, you have some start of session rolls, don't you? Yeah. Please bear with we us. It's been a year. This. I reckon those yeah. right, like, roll into roll, like, work. Let me figure out. Oh, right. Uh, you guys have to pick how much. That's how this works out. You guys have to pick how much cred you put into the job. So yeah, how much are you investing? It's like one to three, uh, it right? It pays well. Yeah, you put in one to three. If you put in three, 
I'll put in three. The, I'm putting three. Caught, this is I'm, I'm right out. Let me double check which one that is. I have 21 thread. I don't. I'm at 12 it, in front. I need to get to it's 20. It's just if I think the main thing is just the uh, the what we call it the uh, moving up the clocks. But uh, I believe you normally, if you succeed, you get paid out double because it pays well. You get paid out triple. So we've got the directives. Getting a job. Oh boy. Another thing I also won't miss is how the book is organized. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're all going crazy. <laughs> because I do not know where in this PDF is the rule about how much money you make. I'm going to dig it up. Control F paid. Battery was your man's. You paid. I don't even know if there's like other versions of this book that exist. Nah, no, I think this is it. I think the others talked about maybe a second edition, but I don't believe it exists currently. This package is running commission. Being paid. And soon we're like, quick, quick. Why would you not reiterate how much they get paid, game? You're assuming that we understand what the result of getting paid is. I thought it was like two to three times, depending on if it was well tied, paid, but I don't... Two to three times what you put in? Uh, yeah, that's that's what I've got. But my problem is that when you put in three, you advance a clock, and I don't know which clock that is. I don't know if it's the legwork clock, if it's a corpo clock. And I can't actually find the rule about being paid. Links. And I feel like, given how important... Okay, wait, here we go. Cred. Earning cred. Get the job. Stakes one, two, three points. Cross off that cred, by the way, it's gone. Goodbye forever. If you complete the mission, get paid in full. You get paid back twice, you staked. If it pays well, you get three back. Uh, staking three cred raises the stakes. For every player that does, the legwork or action clock advances, starting with the action clock. Okay, so we're all going to start with four advances then. Well, like all right, two, sorry about two. that delay. I had to figure that out. Uh, I think that's only printed in earning cred, which is a little awkward. So we start with. Well, if that's the case, I'm actually just going to put in two. Okay, we'll get three clock advances. Clock I mean, advancing is bad, right? Uh, Usually. Yeah, it gets a little spicier. Uh, though your role for getting paid is unspent segments on the legwork clock. So you still have a few of those. But it means you're making moves. You're getting ready to do big, big slams. All right. Okay. Sorry. We resolved that. So uh, now we probably need to handle. Uh, actually, no. Technically, we should resolve the rest of Axe's move. We got distracted by me not remembering how to get paid. Um, so uh, you picked the employer is identifiable. So let's identify him. Um, you're able to, through subtle. Uh, you know, questions with Dikla and just picking up on subtext and stuff, maybe a little passive research, your little tactical computer's doing in the background. 
uh, you are able to discover, Odin, that your true employer is named Edwin Althaus. Uh, Althaus is an oligarch. He's old money. Uh, he is described, if you were to, you know, I don't remember what the what I called the fake version of Google, but it's something. Non-gent. Like, yeah, that's right. Non-gent. Yeah. You put up your old non-gent search engine and, and you know, look at his blurb. Uh, you would see that Edwin Althaus is an eccentric engineer specializing in uh, automation and aircraft. His company was bought out by CrossNexus after the collapse, shortly after he retired, but he is still uh, listed as a consultant and he's on the board of directors. Thanks to CrossNexus advances in biotech, he's uh, reportedly very spry for a man in his uh, approaching 70. Uh, he has officially retired to run a 1920s pulp adventure themed casino in Vegas called Hangar 20. Not Hangar 11? No, number 20. Lame. Uh, and that's, you know, your basic identify. You can also choose to research him further if you want. All right, now uh, we need to remember Metatron's technically should be rolling at the start of the session moves. Yeah, I have to roll like three rolls, I think. Oh, God. Oh, no. That's another thing we got to clean this up. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, let me know which which ones you're doing and in what order. Oh, no, no. I only... Okay. Each session, I only select two crew and two jobs. Okay. Ah, so okay. it's one roll. I just get to pick. So I will do surveillance and tech work. Okay. And then it's poly 2d6, right? And I'm rolling edge. So, what I get? Yeah, twelve. Is that good? I was better. Yeah, no, that's good. Okay, because I add my edge, so I add. I was going for. Yeah, I add my edge, so that's uh, fourteen. So let me look at what that means. Hustling. Thankfully, oh, I have a handy chart. I profit from each of my jobs. So I which think one I did you two cred? No, it depends on what your uh, your jobs are. Which one did you pick again? It was tech work and uh, tech and surveillance. Okay, so uh, you oh, gain one intel, intel, one gear. Yeah, you gain the intel, gain gear. Yep. Your little workers have been productive. So you guys, the group currently currently stands at one gear, two intel. All right, okay, so uh, delays about uh, remembering how to play this game aside. Uh, we're in it. You guys have your you know, your initial startup information. You've got your directives. Uh, are you guys going to go to work right away at 3 a.m., or? I mean, I can't really do my work until people are up, because most of my work involves calling people. Mm -hmm. When's the maglev leaving? Uh, you guys got a couple days. I guess on the dry uh, I, frame for when you run out of leg work spaces. I guess so. I think on the drive back, I'm just gonna start looking up. I guess the maglev route, and I guess then it's schedule. So I think that's just a normal research role. Uh, let me uh, double check how research is phrased. Because I'm probably looking into that, and then probably just the area overlaps, and then just I guess we'll see yeah. if anything's ter any territory stuff comes up. All right. Uh, well, then, so uh, you, you know, uh, ask a question from the list in mind. All right. Get the thing open. But, you know, you, yeah, you ask one question from the list and then roll. Plus mind. I guess the question is then how secure is the maglev? Uh, while Odin is doing that, you know, as he's going back to his apartment or something, uh, what are the rest of you guys doing? You're just gonna find a place to chill until people are awake? Um... I guess I'll do a little bit of research myself on... 
possible corporate interference, like who would be interested in this? But like, you can't really do that without the cargo. Uh, if you guys, because obviously you have to, it's one of your objectives to load and secure your container. Uh, you guys have access to the rail yard where, you know, the box car and oh, we do? the package is being stored. Yeah. I mean, you yeah, get. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I want to. I want to point out. I've explicitly said that you have to load the load the car. Um, ideally, you are not just going to stand the four of you in a room with the with the package in a box car because that would be suspicious as fuck. I was gonna hire some people to like just be people live in there, but that's another thing. Do that. Uh, I have. I literally have a gang. Yeah. Fair enough. I can't remember if this but... version of Claymore has a gang or not either. I have a gang. Okay. Yeah. I just recruit people. Um, I can recruit people. You guys may have to make some extra steps to get your gang on board the train because uh, only the four of you are are covered as you know security for this item. But oh, no, I, I have plans for that later. Uh, um, but yeah, no, because you have to load your things. box car, which is not a passenger car. I would like to reiterate. Okay, let me see. Um, you guys would have access to the car and the cargo because ideally it needs to be loaded before it is put in the hookup line with the rest of the cars and maglev the fuck out of here. It would be a little difficult for me to ask you to to acquire dummy cargo and stash it in the the box car when you can't get then to the box car. I will probably, uh, in that case, head to the rail yard after the meeting. Okay. Uh, anybody else want to go to the rail yard with Metatron? No, I do got a couple people. I probably am going to be calling when it is not inappropriate to call someone. I don't know. Blue Steel can be fucking up at three a.m. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm not calling my contact at 3 a.m. I don't have a death wish. Yeah. Uh, you wanna, Wolf, you will, uh, Wolf will head with uh, Medtron to the okay. loading dock to watch his back. Well, so uh, the the way research is phrased, X, is you, you ask a question from the list below, then roll mind, so it's one of the listed questions, and then you get a second question if you get 10+. plus. Oh, okay. I got 10, so I guess there's like also, now you have another intel. You have, like, three of those. Yeah, now we have, like, two gear, three intel. One gear, three intel. One gear, three intel. Unless one of you spawned another gear for something. No, no. I just think of something else. Yeah. And I guess it's, uh... Yeah, I guess we'll just start with how secure is the maglev. And then just to preset the follow up would be like who is who or what is related to uh the I don't know how to word it, but basically the land the route that the maglev is going through. Well, you are the way it's phrased for invest when you investigate a person, place, object, or service, so you are investigating the the place of the route, I would say, right? Yes. Okay. So that yes, you can say who or what is, you know, related to the route. That that works. All right, so how secure is the maglev route? Uh, the answer, it's both secure and not secure. So you're you're doing basically, not exact science here, but based on my own looking at Google Maps, basically what you do is a kind of like an L jog. Like the maglev will cut through a valley to get across the mountains, and then you just shoot straight down through the desert towards Vegas. Um. When you're in that part where you are just in the deserts of the former Nevada territory, there is fucking nothing there. So on the one hand, this means you're looking at a giant, empty, flat, probably very hot desert where nobody lives normally. So, you know, you've got visibility for fucking miles, you know, and there's no, like, roads or anything to worry about. That's great. On the other hand, nobody's there, so, you know, there's not, like corporate electric fences and rows of, you know, anti-air drones or anything running along. So you'll be able to see any threats coming from a long way off. But other than whatever you guys have on your person or stored on the train and whatever anybody else on the train has, there will not be any support. Um, I don't even, you know, depending on how fast acting they are, I don't even know if you guys could call back to like an, an air base and have, you know, uh, Suzaku or Cross Nexus run like a UAV to come help you out or anything, you know. Trains be moving fast. Hmm. 
Now, who or what is related to that route? Um, honestly, the answer is nobody. Um, you are talking about miles of uninhabited fuck off desert. Um, the closest you would get to people related to it would be nomads, arves, you know, uh, who are inherently mobile and you know truck from place to place in their their RVs and other support vehicles. Corporate propaganda would have you believe that, you know, the ARVs are all, you know, bloodthirsty kleptomaniacs who will take anything that's not nailed down. But you've probably been in this business long enough to know that that's not uh, 100% true and that, uh, like most humans, uh, they don't do anything for no gain. So if there's nothing on the train for them to, that's worth them, you know, getting into a tussle with the corpos, there's no real need for them to get up in your business. I kind of want to use an intel to be like, if I was going to rob this train myself, would the valley and the desert be viable? Would it be viable points to actually assault it? Reveal knowledge when you reveal knowledge of the opposition's preparations to Uh Honestly, the best way to do that would be just hold on to the intel, and then if you're in the valley and like you get attacked, you would be like, reveal knowledge. I knew this was going to happen. Fair enough. Yeah, because then you get plus one forward on it. Yeah, I think that's... Listen, it's been a while, so reminding how that works is, is a little loosey-goosey, but okay. Uh, Odin, anything else you want to do in your, your researching as you auto-drive home, I guess? Eh. No, I'll wait till after they check the site. Okay. All right, okay. Uh, let's technically do... Uh, Claymore first. Because you're going to call Blue Steel, who is a, a, a lieutenant and enforcer with the Sapphires, which is another Kangan gang, correct? Yeah. All right. All right, you pull out your new hollow phone. Uh, it rings a little bit. Uh, and then you get a, you know, you get a connection. Uh, you can hear uh, thumping Chrome House music in the background. Mm -hmm. Oots, 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 oots. Go for Blue Steel. Sorry, I just spaced. Did um, she say anything? Yeah, sorry, that was go for Blue Steel. It's like, uh, Claymore, but hey, Blue Baby, it's Claymore. So I, listen, I got something a little weird going on here, and I'm going to see if you want to get in on this. I basically got a full train. Not full train, that's a lie. I don't know why I said that. I got a box car that's almost completely that's almost completely empty, and I'm gonna be doing a run down over to the Vegas mini mega city. I don't know how far you all are out there, but I got space and I got space and if you wanna, you know, put something on there, I can uh I can transport it for you on the cheap. Interesting. A whole car, huh? Well that's a lot of cubic volume let me see is there a good we're just double checking if there's a, a good move for this uh no i think this is just uh hit the street oh, roll style okay uh -huh. do, 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 do. let me double check all my shit just to make sure i am not a fucking fool here what is my style zero I think it's zero. Yeah, it's zero. Okay. D1, don't fuck me now. I don't need a 10, but let me get in that. Nope. They're fucking me. It's fucking me. That is a miss. Nope. Actually, I don't even know where my D6 are. Where are I? Hang on a second. There, there's this, you know, kind of, kind of a pause. You hear maybe some, some tapping or some scrabbling in the, in the, in the back. Uh, and so, uh, you know, Blue Steel comes back on the line after a second, maybe even, you know, put the phone down for a tick or something, and says, "Hmm, well, not Claymore. We don't have anything uh, bigger than a bread box to move right now, but." If you're willing to go a little uh, outside circles, uh, 
I got a, you know, we, we know some guys who know some guys who know some guys. Uh, might be able to, to have you, uh, you know, you do a solid for, for us. We're doing a solid for another guy. He's doing a solid for another guy. You know how it goes. And uh, if you're willing, we can use that package. Uh, but uh, it's just a little tiny thing, you know. Um, going to need you to, to uh, run, you know, a couple pallets worth of uh, synth coke. Will that be a problem? No, the Claymore thinks about it, and it's like, nah, nah. It's like, no, nah, it should be good. All right, excellent. Okay, uh, you know, you uh, you forward the deeds to my people, and uh, I'll forward the deeds to their people. Sorry. And uh, we'll get you just a couple extra pallets. All right. Uh, they'll probably be labeled like. Baking soda or something. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't. Do you think I write shipping manifests? Anyway, talk to you later. Ciao. Click. All right. Well, that's that's some quote unquote dummy cargo. Yes. All right. Technically illegal dummy cargo, but you know. Hey, that's perfect. That means if we get hit, they'll be like, "Hey, that's illegal," and probably not, you know, look at the you know inconspicuous package in the corner. Yep. All right, so we'll put that one in your pocket. Yep. If somebody wants to keep notes jot down, you've got a a couple, like I said, pallets of synth coke, synthetic cocaine. Cocaina. 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 All right, it's 3 a.m. Oh, who else do I have in my contacts? Mm, no. I'm going to call Hoshiguma later and see if she has anything that needs to be moved. But that's going to be, you know, after the sun has risen. I am not calling it. That seems fair. Uh, so. Uh, we got the address for the drop off, right? Yeah, I yep. will forward that to Blue Steel. And just uh, give her a note just like, to let me know when the product's on the way so I can meet them there. Okay. And we'll find out later if you actually get that note. Yeah. Because that sounds like a great thing to do on a missed move or something. All right, okay. Let's do Rail Yard Team. Team Rail, Team yeah. Yard. All right, so you guys go down to just the... the mess that is the maglev uh, and there's even still some traditional gauge rail you know yards left uh i'll definitely Oakland. not be wearing my normal uh gear mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure at some point you own a disguise kit metatron yeah so yeah you can costume yourself up how about you wolf how do you look at, at 3 30 a.m in oakland wolf looks like uh what the corp what, where are we going? This is for what corporation? Uh, Cross Nexus. North, uh, Cross Nexus. Uh, I am disguised as Cross Nexus Security. All right, yeah, you got your windbreaker on. Probably got a cap, ball cap. Look normal. And I'm All just right, follow yeah. following Metatron like I'm there, like keeping watch on him or guarding him. Yeah, seems fair. All right, so you guys, uh, you know, uh, like I said, you guys were given authorization to to go check this out so you guys meander your way through uh, rows and rows of uh, of cars and you find you know just in a yard somewhere uh, in a switching yard there is a perfectly normal nondescript box car it's got a serial number and RFID tag that you know it's yours your you know whatever your preferred lock method probably to your because uh, you know you wouldn't want to like put your biometrics on record it's probably to your uh your like local RFID, but you know you unlock the door, slide it open. It's a big empty box car. Uh, inside there is one singular crate. Um, honestly, funny enough, I did not write that description with this intention. But if you've read the Genesis hack, uh, the item you have is probably about the size and uh, similar structure to a drop box. So it's you know the the size of a large travel trunk, but it is you know 
made of secured fullerene carbon steel. Uh, you know, big electronic lock method. So it's something sizable. Uh, this one's not uh, climate controlled and doesn't have life support, so it's not like that one time you guys had to deliver a, a comatose body That's across town. ODing. Yeah, no. It's yeah. not that one. So it's not human, whatever it is. Yep. Or at least not a living human. Anymore. Yep. Damn, that's... Well, that's there. What are you doing? Good question. Um, I'm gonna... Do I get any thermal readings off of this? No. Not at this time. Okay. Um, probably a very mild like electronic buzz because it's got an electronic lock, but no. There is nothing... Gotcha. Actively powered or radiating heat inside this case, cool, cool, or at least cool. nothing that would show up on a scan. Um, I'm out of ideas. And it's not shaped in any significant way. No, it's a pretty standard, you know, secure cargo container type thing. All right. If somebody yeah. has some sort of, you know, lock picking tools or something, wants to crack it open, we can just look inside the box. I mean, I have. Is it an electronic lock or is it a lock lock? It's electronic. So it's vulnerable to hacking? We're all having microphones, but you're making me like not to make me turn this down. Oh, get in the background noise. And, um, figure something out later, I guess. Yeah. 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 Well, he's already said he's doing it. Uh, this wouldn't require a full hackery, you know, type thing. Um, just go ahead and roll me uh, act under pressure, basically. Uh, what's well? I mean, it's normally cool, but I don't I, know if you roll something. Can I for that. use synth core? Because I do have that skill. Yes, if you got a replacement, you can use it. Yeah. Well, if you watch his, you know, Metatron. dark scars were from this, but it's, you know, slips out his, his jacket. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, 13. All right. Yeah, no, uh, no, you, you know, whip out your little access plug. You plug in, you catch the rolling combination lock, unlock it. <clears throat> Metatron. Hmm? What are you doing? Figuring out who's coming after us. I'm not going into this blind. I do believe this is probably something you should discuss with all of us and not decide on your own. No one will know I did this. You did rule of 13, so that is correct. I also have, like, my, my uh, hacking keyboard thingy is ridiculously focused on stealth. That is also true. <laughs> Oh, maybe you can, I don't know, upgrade the locking code so they up to your spec then. Hmm. So if you yeah, they would probably detect. do check in there, Metron, I will be reporting this to the others. Okay. I'm fine with that. Yep, that's Metatron. This is going to make what Owen's going to talk about this morning weird. So you're gonna open up the box and take a look inside. I'm um I'm messaging the other. Well, people is there anyone groups. else in the rail yard? No, it's it's like 3 a.m. No, nobody here. Okay, yeah, then I will I will 
take a small Hell, you want to be want to be inside. super secure uh you can you know close the door to your box car even yeah i'm gonna do that actually yeah uh are you still gonna take like a very small peek or... yeah a very small peek all right it's a little hard to tell exactly what you've got in there from just a small glance even with you know I th i'm pretty sure you have a cyber eye or cyber eyes yeah. however that works out um but uh, it looks like you've got a, you know, standard issue secured container inside. Um, you see, you know, hard copy binders, you know, like looks like uh, some kind of software or data storage. But the bulk of this is taken up with a. Uh, well, you're not entirely sure, but. Uh, it looks like the various uh, mechanical and electronic components to something uh, nuclear powered. You know, it's nuclear powered because you can see the the bloody great radiation trifoils, letting you know that there's uh, live radioactive it. material in there. I immediately shut it. <laughs> it relocks. I, it real, yeah, I relock it. I wipe any note of uh, me having access to this. Yes, yes, you rolled very well. You're good. Wolf, did you take a peek in there anywhere? Oh no, he he turned his back. Okay, all right. You have no knowledge of this. Mm -hmm. And I sent and I sent that message. Yeah. Uh, we need to leave. Why? Um. We're transporting nuclear material. Imagine Wolf just thinks, I wish you didn't tell me that. Is the radiation going to cause us harm? <laughs> Maybe if he hadn't broken a seal on it or something. I don't know. No, no, it's all self-contained. That's, but that's so why Metatron didn't get any thermals. No, it's more if it's volatile is the problem. That was like the only bad. thing I wanted to know. Fuck. I just worry that the people we're going to have to be watching out for might be of a different class of people. Well, this is a Claymore thon, but in the end, does it fucking matter? It doesn't. Well, really Claymore, you and, you and Odin have gotten that message about Metatron was looking inside the box. If, it's very funny if you put it. Uh, yeah. Dallas has to roll his new character early if Wolf shakes him. I might. Well, I'm. Well, um. Uh, <laughs> I've been working with no, him for. No, like, Wolf, Wolf will not shank uh, Metatron. He might uh, cuff him and return him to his mother. But he will definitely not kill him. Uh, right. Claymore yeah, says right. the message, right. message that Metatron had better have a ga goddamn good reason. Otherwise, he's going to get punched more than once. Then he does like a few minutes. He's definitely getting punched once. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, no, Metatron understands he's getting punched. Uh, I need to figure out what we're transporting so I can figure out who is coming after us. <laughs> All cap Spoilers, it might be your bosses. <laughs> All cap <laughs> There are ways to do that without looking in the container that we were asked to guard. But well, there are several messages back from both Onid and Claymore. I believe you will be interested in them when you meet them next. Anyway, uh, I believe Metatron started this conversation with we need to go, so are you guys <laughs> yeah, going to no, leave the uh, rail yard? Metatron is not waiting for Wolf if he does not leave. Like, I assume we're having this back and forth on the, like, on the move. Wolf will follow you and then as you leave the yard, he will then split off and like pretend to be security for the the place and uh, keep a watch on the uh, container. All right, that's fair. Uh, and I I am assuming that Metatron has not committed the 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 word the big N word to text anywhere, right? You just said it out loud no, to Wolf. No, no, okay. All right. No, okay. No, no. Once again, I may have no self-preservation at all, but I am discreet. You know this from working with me. I just have no self-preservation. That is kind of Metatron's problem. Yes, he's very subtle, but also he would absolutely get his face bitten off by a mimic. Yes. Well. All right. So. Well, he's so. probably still going to get some dam damage here in a bit because he is getting oh, no, punched. He is expecting Claymore to punch him. So um, it's it's probably time for you know it's uh, you know 
dawn breaks, the sun rises, uh, you know, up over the mountains, shining down at the the glimmering crown that is the the mega city. Oh, uh, gonna get everyone breakfast burritos. To... Hell yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, everyone gets, everyone gets one. Where are you going to meet? Oh, there's probably like uh. Can we have that a small one, food like, truck cafe that we often meet at that or something? I don't remember something like that. I don't remember something like that. We're out of town, so I don't know if we can. Listen, I'm always down with breakfast burritos, though. Breakfast, breakfast burritos, burritos right. I mean, you guys could just hit up a food truck, yes. Especially if we're in the refuge. District. You guys do a lot of do a Those lot of work in uh, burritos. You guys do a, do do a lot of work in like parking lots of convenience stores and shit. Hell yeah, the combini. I want to ask you. We meet up at a food truck then, I guess. Yeah. You're probably in like a, a public space, you know, next to one of the one of the Oakland refuge hoods. You know, there's there's prefab buildings, building blocks everywhere. You sit at a, a plastic polymer table that uh, feels like it was made before the Singularity War. It was once probably like a pastel green or blue. Uh, now it has been bleached white by the sun. And you guys look perfectly normal as you sit here and eat breakfast burritos and drink, you know, uh, probably slightly, uh, you know, burnt, uh, you know, black calf. It's a kind of coffee. Well, I am saying, first thing that, um, Claymore doors upon obscene Metatron is like, so did your peak get you anything interesting? Uh, Metatron will check to see how many uh, people are around. You're good. We are potentially transporting either a nuclear reactor or a nuclear weapon. Okay. Or rather, a kit to build one. A bit too vague for my taste. Okay, and you talked about you talked a big game last night about how this would let you know who we had to look out for. So give me your answers before I knock our teeth in. That's fair. No, I understand. I think the people we would most likely be uh, encountering, if any corporate interference, uh, would most likely be uh, your employers. Uh, Suzaku. It's Suzaku, right? Yep. That's the military one? Yep, my security. And there's no power company, right? Like our energy company? Uh, I believe Rio Grande handles uh, usually energy extraction. But they're not nuclear generally, right? Uh, no, actually, uh, Pacifica uh, generally does not like nuclear power. Yeah. Yeah. So I would. Uh, actually, if you, guys will, if you guys will recall, uh, your very first it's... job was finding out uh, evidence of how RGC was uh, uh, illegally yeah. extracting uh, uranium and selling it to Texas. If you've ever wondered so why I RGC guess hates you, theoretically, nuts. RGC could be involved, but it's much more likely it would be either a paramilitary group, like those crazy Canadians we had to deal with, or uh, Suzaku Holdings. If it's you, know, I, you know, uh, I'm actually getting vaguely uh, offended that you would think Suzaku would stoop down to using a bunch of, you know, low end guys like this to perform, transport nuclear material when they are very, you know, anti nuclear for reasons. No. I, I I don't think I'll be very honest. I think it would be much more likely we don't experience any corporate interference at all, with the possible exception of uh, inter. Uh, what's the someone else at Pacifica specifically trying to fuck over that uh, Hunter S. Thompson guy because mm -hmm. he mentioned he's getting a promotion. Yes. Um. But yeah, I would much more guess any kind of terrorist or paramilitary organization. Well, do we know who's the guy who is behind Hunter S. Thompson? I mean, not Hunter S. Thompson right now? Like, who got him this job? Yeah. Uh, Odin, did you... Yeah, I was, I, I, I was about to bring up, like... Yes, I was going to bring up today that I figured out who our employer was, but I think it's a bit more complicated now. 
So we are dealing with someone that is part of the Cross Nexus Board of Directors. I had this name here scrolled down. Edwin Althaus. He runs a casino in Vegas. Hangar 20. I was expecting the thing was like some kind of experimental AI tech or some kind of experimental casino thing. But unfortunately, you didn't. It seems you only saw the power source, not actually what it was. Wolf makes a grumpy noise at the mention of AI. Well, listen. Mm-hmm. Either way, it doesn't matter. Metatron, I don't. I don't know why you in this biz. I'll never fucking know. But here's the thing: jobs are based on trust. Trace is based on don't asking stupid question and not looking into things you shouldn't be. When asked about this, he said, "You know what? Um, D said, don't know, don't ask, and it's not important, and it's not." Next time you fucking pull this shit, I will beat your ass up, handcuff you, and drop you in front of your mom and tell him, but you're somewhere, somewhere fucking useful. Yes, sir. It literally does not matter who may or may not come up after this. If Suzaku comes after us, guess what? I'll talk to them and we'll figure out something. If it's not Suzaku, I will blast their fucking asses and that will be the fucking end of the problem. It literally does not matter who this fucking will come after us. I am a man of violence and carnage, and I will betide anyone who even thinks they're going to be able to get close to this. Whoa. Yes, sir. Majora's just staying his feet. <laughs> but also, God damn it, I'm like, I can't, I... Hmm. We have fun here. <laughs> I'm not, I'm... I'm not angry you looked, I'm more just disappointed you didn't look enough. Well, be grateful. Uh, I have changed. My- I would not say that for a playbook. <laughs> I have changed. I have changed my mind about punching him. I, I think I have yelled at him enough. <laughs> I, I, I believe we've established before that Clay- Claymore reminds Metatron of his father, <laughs> who is like a yes. anti anti Texas and and NCSA, uh, you know, terrorist basically. Okay, a Bayou man. Yeah. Oh. It's also like more machine than Claymore is for now. For now. <laughs> Shit, I've done the thing where I've popped my mic oh. stand loose. Yes, I was looking for this. I was going to save this. <laughs> what? It's something, it's something stupid. But, um... All right. So, oh, actually, that's not uh, Claymore, you know, downs a cup, gets another one. It's like... You know, look around again. Gives like some passerby to stink guy. Nobody fucks with Claymore. They they know. <laughs> and it's like, all right, contacted the sapphires. I got a couple pallets of synth coat that we can transport. It's like sure. they'll be. Dro- not sure entirely when they'll be dropping the stuff by. Blue Steel's got to call some people. Who's gonna call some people, and then they got to call back. But it should be in time. I think I'll also call up Hoshiguma and see if she got any anything that needs she needs to transport or make vanish. But well, I was I was planning oh. to be staking out the uh, the yard, just keep an eye on both our train and uh, any other ones that are going along with it. Just make sure nothing suspicious is going on. Mm-hmm. On the plus side, also means I'll be there hopefully when. Uh, they come to deliver the stuff. I'm only concerned about. We gotta make sure the things. Uh, the only things, the only points I see anything happening is when we put it on the train. That va- the valley, the desert, and then when we get there. I'm gonna work on looking into Edwin House. I mean, Alt House. Sorry. Yes. Actually, right. Metatron, you good? You good with Matrix digging up information on things? Yes, I am. What do you need me to do? I need you to find out who else has booked tickets on that train, and their potential okay. cargo. Because here's the thing: Perfect. what we may, what we may be transporting, might not, you know, cause a problem. But we have no idea what everyone else is transporting. That is a good point. I will check to see if I can find any manifests for the train. Thank you. If we do find anything, please relate it to me as well. I will relate <laughs> to everyone in the group. Um, 
I can I can relate through. I I basically give each of you a number that will only be able to link with my uh uh. I have a partition thingy. My, my head. Okay. My head is partitioned. Yeah, he's got partition storage. Okay. Yeah. Basically, it's the most secure storage. Brain server. Yeah. Well, it's okay. it's a one way server essentially. Uh, no, no, and you're right. Mer uh, Metatron is unfortunately, uh, he's not paranoid, um, but he is unfathomably curious. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. No, you've, you've been playing Metatron. Like, you've, been, like, you've been playing. Oh, look at the box. It's just like... Metatron's been playing like this. I'm, like, I'm not actually, I'm not, I'm not mad at you, Dallas. I'm mad at Metatron. Oh, no. I understand. I understand. We're having a good. Okay, but. Okay. Right, um, well, I will start with. Uh, what Odin said, because I want to know uh, how do you plan on acquiring some furniture? Like, uh, what's, what is your your angle? Because there's a couple of different roles I think I could make this, or not. My idea was legitimately we just I could probably move, but that's a waste of shit, so uh, let's just acquire some things. We can probably stuff the coke in and then also probably just fill up the space so it's not just the crate. Well, no, no, no. We don't need to stuff the coke in anything. Those are going to be on pallets. We're not going to find anything to easily stuff all that coke in. So how, you know, just some junk furniture, how do you want to get it? Like, do you just want to go, um, oh, God, what do they call it? Uh, a cyber Ikea. Scavenging roadkill? Do you want to go to a cyber Ikea? Do you want to rent out a 3D printer and just have it, you know, puke out folding chairs for an hour? Uh, I wanted to get some sofas and a I want to think I want to get like a sofa and like some tables. Okay. Uh, again, do you want to just? I think it's probably uh, on the way to the IKEA. I will see if there's anything around. But if not, I'll just go buy some sofas and tables. Okay. All right. So. Uh... So we have something to sit on. Obviously, wait. I feel like probably the best way to do this is. Uh... I, I feel like, you know, if you're just go going to the, the the Ikea and trying to get a deal, I think that's just fast talk. Okay. You're just like, hey, I need some sofas. I need them now. And just before the one thing that makes me better at fast talk. Oh. Damn, I rolled an 11. I have zero on this, so there. Oh, okay. All right, oh. NPCs, do what you want. And you no know, no weird interference or anything. Yeah, you're able to, uh, without needing to necessarily actually get into your, your cred, because, you know, you... You do stake money on these jobs, so you invest in it. Um, you're able to, you know, get a budget. Um, now, I have a very important question for you. This is solved because you've rolled very well in your fast talk, but it's important for role-playing and for if anybody does ever actually miss, and I could do some very funny things. How are you going to get this furniture transported to your rail car? Um, they will offer you a delivery service on an auto truck or something. Uh, or do you want to uh, get a vehicle you can transport it in, on, around? I guess the question is, could I borrow the truck? Or unless that's like its policy. <laughs> uh, remember when the last time we borrowed a truck happened? Well, this is different. This is buying a truck. This is borrowing a truck legally. Uh, yeah, I, I guess you could you could self you could rent the the truck. You could self drive rather than have it deliberated. Yeah, it's like I'll drive it to look. I'll drive it to the yard, then drive it back. Okay. All right. So you will be busy with that for a while. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. In that case, then, probably uh, let's do Metatron's researching. So you're going to investigate a person, I assume, first. Well, no, first I'm going to do the shipping thing that uh, Kramer okay, asked yes. for and just make sure what, who, basically the entire itinerary of the train. Yeah. I think that works as where would I find the manifest as your your research question basically. So go ahead and roll mine. Yeah. Or maybe synth. I don't fucking know uh, you guys. You guys are weird. I can roll uh, uh style for it. Oh, nice. That's one of my oldest talents actually from my uh my days as a uh what you call it? A pusher. Pusher, yeah. It doesn't matter because my style and mind are the same, but it's the principle. 
I just imagined him Jojo posing while he is asking these questions. <laughs> Not had the worst. Nope, that's not. No, no. Nope. One I, too many commands. <laughs> I have borked this bork. I, I don't even know the comment. Thank God I don't have to roll. Oh, oh, mm. oh no. Ah. Oh no. Well, how much style um, do you have, buddy? Uh, I do have three, so that's only a six. It's the... Well, okay. That's not going to be enough. <laughs> mm, no business. Well, so, hey. I guess, guess we have what? intel, at least. I, I do answer your question. No matter what. Um, your question of where would I find the manifest is uh, uh, you are able indeed to just, you know, <laughs> go to the public facing, you know, cross nexus net and like, you know, look up uh, from like a corporate account or something, you know, look up uh, what is um, whatchamacallit. Um on the, the the manifest, like who's rented out what, uh, but you don't get any follow up questions, and make a move. Yeah, I make a move. I need to double check. I want to be. I think only some of those raise the clock. Most times, it's just weird. Well, I think in general, if you miss on legwork, I move at the legwork clock. But yeah, which I will but do. There are other things the that happen second, because yes. I uh, I did the fail fail one. I really, really failed instead of just being the seven to nine, which is like the metal. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, yes, I see how this works. And yes, I am advancing the legwork clock. But yes, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> you find the manifest. Oh, excuse me. Um, so, you know, I'll give you some, some, some notes to, to throw some stuff out there, because you will, uh, you know, be able to further research or other legwork down these things, so long as you want to keep doing stuff, because you haven't, you know... We're not at a time where we have to go to action right the fuck now, and we are not yet at the time where uh, you guys have clearly set up everything. But, uh, researching the train, um, you've got a general layout, because that hasn't come up before. Um, the standard run is 24 cars. Oh. It is split uh, roughly evenly between about, usually about 12 normal shipping cars, which will be uh, box cars or flatbeds. Uh, and then there are passenger cars. Passenger cars are a mix of mostly normal commuter cars, which seat about 64 passengers per car. Uh, but there will be luxury cars, which have uh, private cabins, though they're not sleeper cabins. Uh, and it will have a lounge car, which is a, you know, rolling bar and minimal dining car. More of a, more of like I said, you know, a, a lounge, a bar, a cafe, because it's only, you know, even on a slow day, it's only like... Three, three hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've once again wiggled my mic stand. Very weird. That up again. Okay. Now you stay there. <coughs> Stop wiggling around. Yes, I did just chide my microphone stand. I talk to inanimate objects constantly. Well, I talk into this one a lot, so it you know sometimes I want to mm -hmm. instead of talking at it, I want to talk to it. Sorry. But okay, so. Yes, to, to recap, you've got about 24 cars. Half of those are going to be cargo cars, which will be either box cars or flatbeds. And you guys can feel comforted knowing that you guys got a box car and not a flatbed. Because, uh, by the way, the average speed for these things is about, uh, I believe it's about 200 kph. Jeez, okay. We yeah, go fast. It's, they're called bullet trains for reasons. But they're mag gloves. We mag. We're oh, magging. Yes. Well, they still um, go about the same speed, right? Uh, I think they're faster, but yeah. They're speedy. Um, and you have uh, roughly t you know 12 passenger cars. There'll be normal commuter cars. And there will be luxury cars and cabins. Probably, you know, only a couple of those. And the lounge car. Uh, there are uh, going to be uh, 
basically, there's not a lot of onboard security. You know that there's going to be some agents of Cross Nexus's rail police on board. Um, and they will know that you guys will have corporate passports to be on this train, you know, because you're transporting something. Um, but other than that, uh, the only built-in security on the train itself is there are ID scanners in every car so that the general general public shouldn't be able to move between cars. Considering Metatron is researching this, he knows how this goes. Yes. Uh, there will also be some, uh, according to the manifest, there will be some Suzaku subcontractors on board. Uh, they will either be uh, bodyguarding persons in the uh, private cabin section or uh, transporting, you know, military grade cargo. But, but is this like, no is it normal to have them yeah. doing security? Yeah, they're a, they're a security company. Okay, they do just loads and loads of subcontracting. No, I know. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't like a weird, like, I mean, our first job was doing security for Suzaku. Right? Uh, no, your first job was, uh, well, it, uh, there was no, a Suzaku op on the job? side, but it wasn't, yes. it wasn't for them. Your, your first job was, uh, uh, was stealing data from Rio Grande. Yeah. Speaking of which, by the way, two whole cargo cars are blocked out for Rio Grande Combine. Hmm. Uh, they are moving heavy mining and construction tools from the factories of Oakland to work sites in Nevada. Uh, there's no security uh, earmarked for that, but they do have several technicians and workers uh, mm -hmm. on board to, you know, maintain and set up the cargo. Uh, another fun name that you guys know and love. Uh, hey, y'all remember the Stall Corpse Ritter? Yeah. Uh, they were security during the hotel job. Um they have a okay. European high roller uh, who is going to be in the passenger cars going to Vegas, and they have okay. Uh, okay. filed an official, you know, military transport setup. Uh, so it looks like there's going to be a. Let me see if I actually. Yeah, yeah there's going to be a squad of six knights. Um, however, well, those are the uh, Valkyrie ladies that beat the crap out of me. They didn't beat the yes. crap out of you, did they? I thought we like. I thought they we ghosted that job. They may have laid hands. We did. No, 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 that's right. I got out of there unscathed, and then I met the best. Yeah, the that's who you met. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. All right, I the cartel. Marco, Marco Durado. Um, but uh, you do note that uh, they are traveling in full kit, oh. so uh, they're going to have a cargo section where uh, they've apparently got some uh, uh, some exosuits in storage. Oh. They will not oh. be rocking those on the train, but, you know, they're... If you remember these guys, they are, like, all... Uh, very Germanic, very sleek, dark uniforms, peaked caps. Oh wait! Uh, carrying monofilament great swords. Um, I have an exosuit. So, yeah. I should like I should put that in cargo too. That would probably be a good idea to fill some space if you want to bring it with you on the job. <laughs> you know, um, actually, uh, which one? Which ones are we directly between? Uh, I have not specified, so you guys can just say whoever you want to be between. I want to be next to the Rio Grande cars because I'm going to look and see if they're actually transporting heavy mining equipment. And even if they are, I might still blow it up. Ah, the old one. <laughs> so have we ever asked, but, like, uh, Lucky, how secure are the, the cars to each other? What do you mean? What do you want to split the difference? What do you want to do? Uh, let's be between the Rio Grande cars and the high roller. Uh, no, no, he'll be in the past. Yeah, no, second. yeah, we're going to be, he's going to oh, be... Right, yeah. Yeah. I assume you guys don't want to be the car that's like one down from the passenger no. section. Too, no, right? we okay. want, want probably at least some ablative. Logically, no, but kind of uh, yes. <laughs> but um, Benetron, no Dallas. Yeah. Odin, Odin asked yes, a question. Yes. Um, I did mention this earlier, but to reiterate, um, yes, no, no, there Benetron, is an ID yes, scanner. Oh, okay, Son there's an ID scanner on every car, um, to walk between them. So normal civilians should not be able to walk through it. But anybody else with a corporate passport, like you guys have, will be able to walk between cars because when definitely... you're going you know 200 kph or more uh it, there's no other way for you to go check on your cargo or your passenger other than cutting through other cars hmm i would like to oh and there's one more person on the manifest oh, oh lord um in in passengers that are highlighted um and there's there's more but most of your cargo work is uh uh bulk for uh, Cross Nexus, mm -hmm. like it's their train line, so it's just whatever they've got. You know, they <clears throat> take money to cargo transport things. Um, 
on their own terms. So lots of smaller corps, mom and pops, other shit like that. Um, loads and loads of commuters, you know, or uh, weekenders going to Vegas. But uh, the other big uh, pasture mark is that you notice uh, that according to the manifest, uh, because this train is going to go on through through Vegas, um, there are actually, uh, in the passenger list, uh, officially marked a couple of agents of the Deseret Territory. A couple oh. of their watchdogs are going to be on the train. Hmm. Uh, they are going to uh, ensure that illicit <clears throat> cargo is not dropped off in Deseret uh in violation of the corporate treaty that lets Cross Nexus run a maglev through Deseret. Uh, quick question: Is Vegas in Deseret? No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Vegas is Vegas firmly Pacifica. inside of Pacifica. You guys uh, fought oh, a tiny little border war over yes, that one. Yes, that's right. Okay, just make it. So, gotta happen sometimes. I think the uh, the damn war was uh, was was fought between Texas Deseret and Pacifica over who got to keep that's Vegas. Damn. Everyone's just going mine, mine, mine. Listen, mine, the Hoover mine. Dam in Vegas are probably important and fucking points. In that middle of you know nowhere, yeah, and Easy. that that basically that was a border conflict because it basically set where everybody's borders were. Mm. Uh, Texas didn't d didn't go actually out that far uh, west anymore. Uh, Deseret stops basically, you know, north and west of of Vegas, and Pacifica only goes that far. Uh, fun fact, because uh, I, I wrote uh, Deseret lore recently. Uh, while they were, t they are technically allied with t the Republic of Texas. Uh, it was Deseret that approached Pacifica first to negotiate the treaty for the border. Nice. So, y you have a weird relationship with Deseret. Well, as long as uh, also to remind everybody, Deseret is a uh, is technically a theocratic democracy run by the Mormon LDS Church. Yeah, they that's what, that's what it was. Weird place. They've mm -hmm. gone back in time. I mean, as far as theocracies go, that's not, like, the worst theocracy I could think of. No, but it does mean there's a lot of contraband they don't let in their borders. What was that? It's oh, like... yeah, no, heavy Puritans. Is it, is it is Dogs oh. in the Vineyard was the game, yes. I think, where you basically... I feel like yeah, you could always like play a fucking songs. cyberpunk Dogs in the Vineyard in our setting. Well, that's that's why Deseret's agents are called Watchdog, because I do like that game. Anyway, um... That's everything that does pip up on your radar uh, with you scanning the manifest. But you do take a little note that because there's still a couple days till it's out there, um, there are still, you know, because Cross Nexus will sell every seat and every square or every cubic foot, I should say, inside this thing. There's still room for some more cargo to be added. Um. So uh, that's why I was going to keep watching on the loading docks. Yeah, there may be some stuff going on later. Yeah, because we have there we went to upload it, and then two big points on the route. So, um, if you don't mind me interjecting here, um, Odin, you work for Cross Nexus, right? Yes. Could you somehow wing a protection detail for our car? But like, like I said, you don't actually have to get any people you just need to get enough passes for you know a small group of people Would you say friends and, I, I still got friends at asset protection so that's not that's not hard Claymore, are you thinking five to ten yes well no i literally yeah. have the backup gang no i yeah, that's what i mean yeah <laughs> yeah i have an idea for what i'm gonna do with my gang so this is this is literally what they're built for. They're built for you know, watching my back and protecting shit. But like, like it. um, the um, well, um, Axe, finish your thought. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's that strange if there's been a thing of security con so security consult passes. Yeah, I mean, you guys are are marked as the security for this car, so uh, you know enough about the corporate structure at Cross Nexus that you could. Uh, attempt a role that would probably be either you would have to go to a contact you have at uh, Cross Nexus, which you have a couple, I think, at this point. I, um, I have at least or you could spend a gear to just say, "I have had these passes earlier." Actually, wait, I forgot to do. Uh, I love what I plan. I forgot my at start of mission role. Oh right, fuck, we started the mission. I, bad. I, just, been I have one. For, I just have. A, I can just try to do all that. So I just do that. Yes, that's important. Yes, actually, that's. Very important for meeting flexible. Roll those out. That's 13. Uh, so I have three holds. So technically, one of it just be 
Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, yes, you can spend the just have an excess of security passes. Uh, just give me like an hour and I'll get to those. Cool. Oh, also, because uh, I noticed it was, it was in the text earlier. Um, uh, these are, uh, it's maglev, so they're magnetic levitation. There are probably safety methods to uh, decelerate the cars if they are detached from the, the engine that is doing the, you know, direction and speed setting. Um, it would probably not be great if you did that in the middle of the desert. I was more expecting the people that were going to be dealing with doing that. I mean, if those Rio, if those Rio Grand Combine things are at the last one, then I just might shoot off the fucking connector and just let it go by. I don't know. There's probably a couple of flatbeds at the back, and then Rio Grande and some stuff. But all right. I have a question, Michael. Oh, yes. Go ahead. No, you go. No, go ahead, Mike. No, I was just gonna say I was gonna get the passes once um, Odin got the passes to Claymore. He's gonna get the uh, passes out to um, the gang and have them move in to keep an eye on the the yard. You said that rustlers usually hijack these things, right? They do not usually target been... maglevs, but um, they have been getting more bold and antsy lately, and they do uh, normally attack corporate assets, especially Cross Nexus. What equipment would they use to do such a thing? You guys can put this on your sheet if you want to. <laughs> Funnily specific, but I'll allow it. Um... So you guys have personal first-hand experience with the Rustlers. You know that their kit is usually, um, they have some some off-road vehicles, you know, uh, ATVs, dirt bikes, uh, big, you know, souped-up trucks and dune buggies. Um, they're usually, uh, you know, small arms, uh, and they uh, probably can swing a couple of uh, machine gun mounts. I don't think they, like, shot you with anything explosive. Okay, then I'm going to... Because I already have one APC. Uh, I'm going to have know. my gang pick up a second APC. That's I basically have them in the go, desert. go on the side of us. Yeah. Um, While we're going through wrestler territory. Are they going to be able to keep up with the maglev? It's probably the desert ahead of time. No, you're not going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 200 kilometers, my dude. Yeah. No, no, I mean, they're going to go to that area while we're crossing. Oh, you're going to have them pre-set up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That works. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, I know you have a shitload of money, so I don't think you'll object if I pull up. Where's the list of... Three to four credits on one? Uh, no, actually, you've forgotten how this works. Oh, fair. Mm, yeah, no. Uh, if he's looking for a military vehicle, that's Acred? Cool. Yeah, you got a lot. Okay. Uh... I'm down uh... to 11. Is this just... Yeah, I guess it's just hit the street. So who would you call up to to sell you another APC? Probably Suzaku uh, through the contact I have with them. Yes, I remember that. that was where is that man? We've been going a while, yeah, so you guys I... have a lot of contacts, even at one per job. I remember all of them based on their character traits. I remember almost zero names. I wrote them all down. So, yeah. I did too. Um, my sheet is deletest. Sergeant French. How did you delete it? And uh, my computer exploded. It has been long enough, X, that you got it. Yeah, you got to remember it. To, uh, you weren't here when Dallas said it, but this was the one character sheet he didn't have backed up to drive. Yeah, because of because of how it was on the PDF, PDF. Uh, it was the only one I don't have on drive. Uh, Thanks. Let me just copy the whole of it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done business with him before, so I don't think he'll object. And I will yeah. uh, I have a ridiculous role when I do this. So yeah, uh, I get a plus one uh, because it's a contact. And uh, if I get a, a seven to nine, 
uh, and I only picked one negative result. This is a thing you are good at. I am the fixer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't want to Hold on, was that you wrote? Was that multiplicative? I don't know. <laughs> no, Why I did it roll that many? How many D's? fails I roll? Oh, how did? God. How did you? What? Did you think it was twenty six? Do you what? do? Do you do PEMDAS? D one? <laughs> I don't know what you one just did. You have to leave that. Hard. That's fine. Get, that get the poly in there. There you go. Yeah. Okay, that's for... eleven. Nice, two cars. Uh, also, I get a piece of uh, uh, intel. Twenty-seven. That was twenty-seven dice. So I don't know like four in. Oh, uh, maybe it okay. interpreted E as a dice. I forget. Is intel well, a a group resource? Okay. Yes. Yeah, it is. I but I, it. whenever I do a. Uh, yeah. Uh, hit the streets or the other one, the one I just did. I can't remember what it's called because I'm stupid. Uh, a research roll. I get an intel. Yeah, so you guys got a lot of it. Uh, as long yeah, as I succeed. No. Uh, so you, you know, it's the it's the the ten up. So you get a little something extra. You choose either intel or gear. I'll pick gear. All right, uh, and you indeed get what you want. Yeah, so. Um, uh, you you call up Sergeant Franchella. It's been several months since you know he sold you guys the the military ambulance type. Um, I assume you're going for a more normal uh, APC now than the the not the ambulance conversion. No, this would just be like a standard with a standard. Uh, I mean, I guess I could install the gun myself. It'd probably be extra cred. Uh, and that's probably armed to something. Where's the I have to yeah. look at the playbooks for like what weapon it is, but yeah, you can just get a, a they've they've got an old you know AAV8 model APC, uh, yeah. which is like you know uh, it's it's due to be decommissioned and you are able to float him the obscene amount of cred yeah. to you know have it instead of being you know put in a junkyard somewhere to be scrapped, it's you know yeah. falls off the truck. It'll probably also be. Wait, did we do the job for him, or was he a unrelated third party? No, he was unrelated. Uh, no, he was just a contact you called to get the... Uh, the okay, then I'll probably also be doing this under my brother's accounting. Not using his money, obviously, but just so it makes more sense of why I'm buying an NPC. Yeah, you, you do some... Older brother. I should clarify, RPC. the weapon testing brother. Yes. Yeah, you you do... You you can... You've, you've rolled very well, so you can do your... Uh, your normal uh due diligence on that <laughs> i don't want to just going why did the head of a pr company just buy a military apc <laughs> all right and uh it would be armed with a standard machine gun so three harm here far i got a lot of messy auto yeah. fire and they all have uh, normal machine or normal automatic rifles because yep. they I bought the um the uh, well armed. armed. Yeah, well armed. Yeah. Alrighty, yes. So that is secured. You have uh vehicles enough to transport your gang size and uh you can yeah. you know park them out at a at a, a attention point. <clears throat> okay, all right. Oh no, I didn't buy well armed. That's right. I I had uh I bought military and our ex military and loyal. So they're willing to drive out into the middle of the desert and you know camp out yeah. for a few hours. I mean, I'm not complaining. In in g game mechanics wise, they aren't employees, but mechanics, uh, lore story wise, <laughs> they are still employees. They're just. They're family employees. Yes. They're loyal employees to you. Yeah. Extra, extra company loyalty. Okay. All right. So that's sorted out. Uh, let's see. Claymore, I know you still got so some more contacts. I'm replacing hit Metatron, up. so I don't have to keep doing that. Do you want to uh, also, um, at any point, do you want to go ahead and move your uh, exoskeleton to the yeah. car? Um, I'll have um, I'll have my little blades... Um... 
take it with them when they move in to um make to uh provide security for the cargo uh i i assume you're gonna get on the 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 vpn or the group text and let wolf know yes okay um I'll inform Wolf that I have gotten some extra bodies to help with guarding the area and stuff, and they'll be bringing in a big old hunk of armor. It might seem familiar. Yeah, yeah I think I've seen it on a couple videos recently. Gee, I wonder why. Um, but after that point, yes, uh, Claymore would like to call uh, Hoshiguma-san. Yep. And we'll give her basically the same spiel. We're going to... Vegas on a train. We have a box car with some stuff. If they she needs some stuff, if she needs some stuff moved or some stuff to disappear, maybe in the middle of a desert somewhere. You know, Claymore's your guy. All right. Well, you've gone to a contact roll style. Let's see if this does better. Hey, seven. That's pretty decent. Yeah. You're plus zero, yeah, right? Yeah, plus zero. But that's still a six. That's the medium level. Yeah. yeah, it's a it hit. Uh, so pick pick two. Uh, you know, take some time, unwanted attention, or they need you to help them out with something else or cost you extra. Oh, well, shouldn't cost me a damn thing because since I'm the one doing the... Yeah, strictly speaking, this is cost you extra would not cost you anything in cred because you are doing her something mm. but you know it's a business proposition uh, let's so. see here uh, oh I have to choose two, uh, yeah, let's, two. let's see here on a partial this is weird slightly but I don't want it to cost extra because that seems weird I also don't want to take some time because we're on the clock so I guess that means as your quest is going to attract unwanted attention, complications, or consequences, and your contact needs you to help them out with something. All right, so you take minus one on going with Hoshiguma until you do that. And also, uh, yeah. Uh, no, it says if you turn them down, you take minus one. Oh, right, sorry, if you turn them down. Okay, so yeah, I, I pitch it first. So, yes, you have this conversation, and, and Hoshiguma's like... Mm, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, Vegas, all right, that's the just way, let me do some math, and you're gonna be, you know, not lingering, right, not gonna take too long to get out of here? Uh, does she mean that, like, we leaving soon, or? Yes, like, like, you're, you're, you say you have a box car, like, she's asking, you're not gonna, like, sit on it for a week. Like, no, like, we got, it's like, it's the day after tomorrow, right, that it goes, or? Is... Something like that, yeah. yeah. We got, we're a little loose with the timeline, but I said about two days, yeah. so yeah. You've got, like, a full day and part of a day yeah. left. Yeah, uh, Claymore would just want, like, yeah, like a day and a half. Then we out. Okay, okay, good, good, great, excellent, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, listen, you know I always bring the finest quality products, but I can't be responsible for what the customer does after point of sale, right? Mm-hmm. Uh... So I've got some, uh, what you call it, uh, return items, yeah. Some returns, some guys overbought some things. So uh, I, uh, you know, have some merchandise that I need uh, to be disposed of in Vegas. Or more, you know, more accurately, I'd really like it disposed of uh, somewhere else along the way. Ah. Mm, but also, hey, a train, right? You going, big fancy train, going to Vegas? Yeah, one of the big fast ones. Back left. Yeah. Um, so um, this should not come as a shock to you, but I don't normally do returns. So uh, I'd really appreciate if you could make this customer, uh, you know, give him a little bit of that extra customer service, you know? A little bit of the old Claymore warranty. You can hear on the end of the holophone, you know, the fist hitting a palm. It's like, it's like, do you want the permanent warranty or the temporary warranty? Uh, you know, I'm willing to, ex I'm willing to accept, uh, you know, just a little bit of a, a, a service fee in, you know, teeth or shins. But, uh... <laughs> 
well, you know, you got to do the deal. So uh, they're going to be in Vegas. So I'll I'll let you handle the, the return policy and, you know, however you feel about that at the end. All right. Just, uh, just flick me them deets and uh, send uh, the uh, merchandise to insert address here. We have yeah. people there uh, ready, ready to accept it. All right. Okay, let me grab a random name real quick. I enjoy this, actually, like, being like, hey, I have services. Let me sell them to you. It is something I've always appreciated about the scroll as opposed to a lot of the other ones. Yeah, the contact economy is very fun back and forth, and hopefully the way the favor economy works in Genesis will keep that. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Good, uh, yeah. sure. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is a perfectly normal name. Yes. Okay. Uh. Uh. So the person uh Hoshikuma wants you to 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 pay. What you call it? A beating <laughs> too is uh, Kennedy. Uh, they're gonna be in Vegas, and uh, well, yeah, you'll you'll find out how much stuff you gotta dispose of uh when we get there. Uh. Meanwhile, I feel like enough time has passed that uh, Odin, you've you know driven up in the rental truck. Uh, you uh, arrive there to see that uh, you know Klimmer's backup gang, the little blades, are there, so you no longer have to uh, unload all these these things yourself. They're called the little so, blades because uh, they're not part of the original blades game, but you know they've heard some things. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, so your box car now contains. Uh, probably a couple of couches and, like, you know, some uh, cheap folding tables. Uh, the, you know, uh, you know military hard case that uh, Claymore's power armor comes in. The box. The box. And uh, that is currently it at the moment, though you have a couple of deliveries that are going to slide in. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Wolf is just, for the moment, chilling, uh, looking. Uh, do you want to do anything different, Wolf, now that, um... Uh, calling, yeah, uh, I'll probably... Oh, well, dude, now's a good time, Zenio. I'll go ahead and use my case the joint uh, action to try and, like, get intel basically on the other other cars and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, you're gonna gonna case the the train yard and the the soon to be assembled train. Yeah, works. All right, so that's edge. Oh, so yes, I put down his Metatron. And let everybody know about the manifest yet. Was it? Uh, the the data you got the manifest of you. Uh, oh yeah, no, I would have told everyone in the party. All right, Actually, that is a twelve. So that is three intel, which I can either spend in the normal way or I can spend one point intel to ask questions from assess or research lists. So let's pull this. Keep. Do so probably assist, I think. Assess, I think. Let's see, is it I can just use it once or is it spends it into a normal way or okay. So in that case uh, this one's always interesting. Uh what do I notice despite an effort to conceal it? Oof. Ah oh, this is a great timing on this. Or is it doozy? Okay, so you, you take some time to, like, scope out the rest of the train yard, find the train cars that are marked for this train, because you've got the manifest and stuff. Yeah. Um, and so uh, you're looking around, and uh, you you notice one of the flatbed cars uh, that's, that's earmarked for you. Um, there's a very uh, large object under uh, a chameleon line tarp. And there's there's a couple of people standing around it smoking, 
loading up crates on the flatbed who have suspiciously Canadian accents. Okay. As, uh, hey, remember how I said there was some space left that some people could have bought? Uh, some there we go. Here. So like, you, you will far aware of this. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see, what else? Du, 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 du. <laughs> what potential complications do I need to be wary of? Okay, so you can do math. Um, you were not there for the bloody leaf job that happened where no. uh, <laughs> Metatron <laughs> punched a power line and passed out, I think, <laughs> or, something. Or, he got sh uh, or he got shot in the back and, and passed out. I think you did both of those things. You punched a power line and then you took a bullet in the back. Um, and, you know, Claymore had to tear apart an abandoned high school to get him. So, you know, you don't know what, what, what kind of backdrop this crew has exactly, but it may have come up at stories, and you know that they are a, a you know, ultranationalist terrorist group who is opposed to Pacifica, among other things. They're very right. opposed to the Quebec, but anyway. Uh, so, you know, the we're asking the, the, the complication one, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, you don't know exactly what's under this tarp, and you're not going to know unless you want to, you know, sneak up close and look at it with your eyeballs because it's under, you know, something sensor dampening. Um, but you reckon it's uh, vehicle-sized? And mm. they've got at least half a dozen guys guarding it. If you want to linger a while, you might even say in shifts. So, you know, that that means that you've got... Uh, a group of militant, probably armed, you know, angry uh, dozen or so terrorists who maybe they want to do something on this train ride. Maybe they want to do something in Vegas. You don't fucking know. You just know they're here. And that's a complication. How many times are we going to have to deal with these fucking idiots? Well, to be fair, we've only dealt with them once before. No, no, twice. Was it twice? Yeah, they were on the uh, when we had to transport the hacker job as well. No, that wasn't was the one job. No, the the thing that ties them together is they both were a Johnson sister. One of the I can't remember if she's a leader or just a member, but one of the Johnson sisters is in the uh, Bloody Leaf, and Claymore specifically captured her and then released her as a favor to the third a third Johnson sister that Claymore has a personal contact with. Yeah, that Didn't was that was all the Canadian job. A second Johnson. Yeah, we transported a second yes. one though. Um, we got her out of a trailer park. I want to say yes. No, that was that was park, all the Canadian yeah. job. Yeah, uh, which well, was well, also no, the no, job cause... where you found out there they were operating in an abandoned school. No, no, no. Those were two different jobs because it was the first Canadian job, and then it was the one where the person OD'd. I don't. Did you run into them in the? No, in I don't the think other so. one. I don't think you did. Well, we didn't. Well, we the one where I got shot unconscious was fairly recent, and that was different than the first Canyon job. No, I, I, I. Well, we can check the audio later, but I think that. Well, there, was all you, the you got unconscious twice actually, because that one was from like the car crash. Yes, you did get. You also passed out from a car crash during the, the medical job. That was separate. That's when you broke all We're your bones. Yeah. All right. No more questions. I'll add uh, one intel to the, the group pool. Five intel now. Yeah. So hey, if you ever want to reveal um, you know information about the enemy's planning and disposition, you've got a lot to do it. Yeah. One gear. Um, yeah, I'll definitely. Uh... And you get two gear. Okay. Let me try and add one. And you haven't spent any yet. Oh, I spent my own. Yeah. Anyway, yes. Sorry, Wolf. Go ahead. Uh yeah, he'll Wolf will definitely uh, alert everyone via. He's gonna. Pretty much ping the itinerary, itinerary that uh, Metron post. Yet he's going to add um, angry Canadians to the uh, the pallet the pallet that uh, he spotted the them at. Yep. Uh, 
Claymore will shoot a a um a message back asking if any of those angry Canadians had some any sort of like label marker patch you know um identifying mark that they all had in common uh they're probably not in uniform but not, they're they're, yeah, they're dressed in their usual paramilitary nines mm. no but the uh, wolf will actually contact you directly at that point no no patches or anything but the way they were talking and stuff they were discussing their bloody leaf all right um okay second question he will sit oh i don't actually know remember her first name uh the one that i freed oh, which one and, oh, and told her to go uh, run into the fucking desert Bloody Leaf one? I don't remember that one. I only remember the one we escorted because she's my contact. Yeah, no, you yes. you 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 scouted her. I remember that. I got her mm -hmm. in my NPC list. I I future proofed. It's Patricia Rouge Johnson. Yeah. And yes, that's actually supposed to be spelled that way. Yeah. It's like um Claim Claimer probably has a picture. I'm just gonna say he has a picture. That's like and you know, he'll 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 flick that to uh Wolf. Did you see anyone who looks like this? And show a picture of Patricia. No. Okay. Negative. All right, cool. If I remember correctly, I actually when I I think I tried to scare the shit out of her, and I think I actually made her a threat. If I remember correctly, so uh, the bloody leaf are on the threat board. Yeah. Yes, I swear we've inter inter and, yeah, interacted with them twice. You, they might have come up a couple of times. The the big one. No, was I, re I remember what it was. I remember what it was. It was the oh. other paramilitary Canadian organization you made in red markets. Yep. But I'm getting confused. Yep. With. <laughs> that's because it's it's because Bloody Leaf is, is is a joke from that. Yes. Though I also gave them a very serious uh, and appropriate backstory. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Wolf, do you think you would actually be able to find out what's underneath that tarp without like anyone knowing? Yeah. And it's like we probably don't want to start anything right now, but if they got something, if they got some serious hard runner there, I want to be, I want to know beforehand. All right, I'll wait, wait until it gets dark. Good idea. Don't worry about our own security. Um, like I said, the the um, the little blades will will keep an eye on our shit. Um, it's really a who's who of who's been in our lives. So we still got. Honestly, the Stall Ritter probably the. What is Stall Ritter? Isn't that like Steel Knights in German? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The Steel Knights probably won't be a problem unless we something actually happens. They'll probably give us the stink eye, though, so consider them a, consider them a neutral force. Uh... Actually, Wolf, get. While we're at it, before everything gets up, you think you can find those two Rio Combine trailers and take a peek in them as well? Yeah, I can do that while I check when I check out the uh, what's underneath the tarp. All right, I'll um, I'll join you at the um, at the um, trail yard trail yard tonight, and if shit goes tits up, I will make a fucking scene. But yeah. I I <laughs> I know the blood leaf are up to no good, and well, I never trust the Rio Combine. Never trust them. All right, but that's for later. All right, thanks. Click. All right, and yes, I asked this o earlier. Uh, Odin, yeah, you delivered your furniture. Anything from you now? Let's see. Uh, I don't need to recruit anyone because I already got enough tags for everyone else's. Oh, I personnel. will inform everyone of tonight's plans, though. And that we're okay, yes. and that um, more um, cargo is on the way. Don't need to get more things in the. Uh, all right, don't need to get more things in there. So yeah, no, I think mm. our box car is pretty, pretty, pretty stocked. Yeah, I, if anything, uh, I think it's depending on how how much shit Hoshiguma is sending you. Uh, it, it's not like packed to the brim, but you probably don't want it packed to the no. brim so you can maneuver. But you've got you know a couple of big heavy military hard cases. You've got some loose furniture, and you've got you know. X number of pallets coming. 
also you're gonna staff it with you know like a dozen people yeah i think we're good on filling the car and i think we're good on backup info uh Metatron has expressed interest in reviewing the client but we can get to that in a second yeah. i i don't feel like provoking anything in that regard <laughs> Sorry, well, I just had a weird thought. I'm like, do we want to get Metatron a, a gamer chair <laughs> so he can do hacker shit inside the trade? We buy his own. A cyber deck, that's fine. But I think I've done it my end because it's like, I don't really know. I don't really want to kick the Hornet right now. Okay, all right. We already have like uh, five Intel, so it's like, I don't know. If, hmm. Yeah. I don't know if there's any like particular tools or gear you guys want to pre acquire. Um, you know, ahead of time, losing. other than like, just good, the coverage. I'm just good for getting good gear. Fair enough. I guess I will assess it during the during the job. I'll probably do an assess, but that's during the job. Yeah, that's uh, okay. All right. Then um, before we get to even time, the next thing is um, so uh, who all is posted up at the rail yard uh, right now? Right now, I know that. Um, uh, yeah, not me. Uh, I'm probably there. Wait, before we go, I have one more person to call. Sorry. Okay. Uh. I would like to call. Uh, do I want to do this? How much do we know about? I'm gonna see first what I can get from just researching um, uh, Edwin House, Alt House. Yes. Because I want to make sure we're not gonna get fucking. Um, uh, I mean, I can't think of another reference. Fucking New Vegas in this. Well, the thing about it is, that's on how well I do at the end. Your toe. But yeah. Uh, so I'll just do a research roll into him, and then if I can't get enough, I'm going to call. Uh, 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 let's see. Uh, would that be. Hmm. Who or what is related to him? Is your first question. How secure is Edwin Althouse? Actually, honestly, how secure is he? Might might be the correct question to ask. Yes, we'll start yeah, from there. Yeah, there's gonna be one of them. Uh, it's how secure, what, and basically, like, what is his goals? Uh, that's a ten. Nice. Okay, so you uh, w one, we get another fucking intel. We gotta spin this shit on. Something. You guys are so pre prepped. Yeah, spin. We all spend it during the job. We're not gonna spend it that much on the job. Uh, We're not gonna spend six intel during the job. I mean, probably spend, you could probably spend one right now, I guess, on him. But can matter. someone spend intel on finding out who the fuck the Stalin Ritter are guarding? I can do that. Let Dallas's thing go through. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna figure that. Out. Oh God, brackets, <laughs> intel. <laughs> You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> it can't help itself. I know. I really, I really wish I could tell it not to read brackets that way. Because we just typed the roll commands, but I guess whatever. Anyway, okay, so uh, you get your intel, and you're asking first how secure basically is he, and then um, I'm guessing probably something related to like how valuable. But I'll let you think on that one because I'm gonna answer your first question yeah, first. I gotta find the the sheets again. Lucky linked everything earlier, so you're. I'm sure you can scroll up and find it. Where is my notes on that guy? Yes. All right. So you know the basic, you know, snapshot profile that um, everything that you know, uh, Odin was able to find by just feeding his name into search engines. You know, he's a he's a businessman. Uh, he was he specialized in engineering, uh, and particularly in engineering of automation and aircraft. Um, his company was one of the many companies bought out by Cross Nexus after the collapse. So he retired from business. Now he owns a casino as his like retirement project, which I said before, it's, you know, 1920s pulp adventure themed. Um, you dig a little deeper because you're trying to figure out how secure he is. Well, you know, he's as secure as an eccentric 70 year old engineering man is. Um, you, especially you being Metatron, being a, a stone or S stone, as it were. Haha. <laughs> But um yeah it, that's my brother. Yeah, you dig through or everything. My sister um, possibly. That uh I named all He's of them. he's he's had his fair share of scandals and investigations despite the fact that he's, you know, like I said in his 70s, 
he still flies, flies his own private planes when he needs to go somewhere. Um, he regularly streams high stakes poker games out of his casino. Uh, and uh, you also know that he's got a few, you know, weird rumors about him. Um, you've heard, you know, stories on the DL in the in the the the, the dark net that he's like purchased likeness rights to like actresses or supermodels to replicate them as androids or you know he's funded development of cross nexus into uh uh exotic uh form factor biomods of the bunny variety <laughs> also um for a picture uh, obviously his name is a reference to mr house from new vegas but also i want you to picture uh a little bit of hugh hefner as well like just just imagine aviator shades and a robe and nothing else. That's every picture of him in the last like five years. That's Bond villain and more just old old rich guy in the future. Well, he's I mean, an oligarch. Have you seen many Bond movies? A lot of them are old rich guys. <laughs> it's oh. like most of Bond villains. Okay, Does yes, he have you... a golden gun tucked in his robe? I guess we'll find out at the end. Well, at least the main villains. There's always the henchman who is more. Yeah. Young. But... I'm just imagining the other uh, porn mag guy, the crazy one. Oh, God, what's his name? The one for Hustler? Yeah, Larry Flint. That's right. Let's see if I can get a picture of him. They're good. But yeah, so uh, also with your follow-up question. Uh, my follow-up question is, what is the relationship between... Uh... Ooh, I have two follow-up questions. Can I use an Intel? He's on the board he's, he's on the board of directors for Cross Nexus. That's true. That is known already. Um, you might be yeah. able to use your Intel to reveal. I posted how reveal knowledge works earlier. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do my Intel for the second one, because it's a personal uh, question. Uh, but I will do, what is the relationship between... Pacifica still has a government, right? Yep. Nominally? Yeah. Uh, what is the relationship between uh, Edwin Althaus and the Pacifica government? Ooh, uh, a very good question. Um, if, if I were to put it in words, uh, it's probably the same relationship that uh, most uh, old, white, rich people have with the government. Okay which is he is for government when it helps him. He is against government when it hurts him. Uh, like I said before, he is an oligarch, so he is old money. You know, he's been in the business since uh, before the war even, let alone before the collapse. So, you know, he 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 votes both with his uh, money and his actual vote uh, in elections. Um, but but he, he, is he particularly outspoken for political... No, he does not appear to have any uh, okay. major, you know, public political opinions. Uh, uh, if you had to guess, you know, like I said, I've called him eccentric. He's got weird hobbies. Uh, I will, you know, saying, oh, he keeps to himself is uh, feels like that's kind of a, you know, a loaded term. I'm not saying he's a serial killer, but. Um, no, I'm definitely thinking more ANCAP, less serial killer. He's a tinkerer, we should say. He's a fiddler. He likes to 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 build things and design things and do things hands on. There's a reason why he, like I said, he, despite the fact that he has more than enough money and enough clout with Cross Nexus to get fucking, you know, uh, a a dozen ex Air Force guys to fly him wherever he needs to go. He climbs in his own little, you know, personal private plane and flies around. He's a, a hands on guy who likes to work on projects and things. Okay. And then for to spend intel for a personal matter, uh, what is the relationship between him and Stone and Sons? Uh well, you know, uh, this is this is power of reveal knowledge. You know, you get to reveal your knowledge. What what do you think? Um, you're you're in Stone and Sons. What do you think his relationship is? He's technically on the Cross Nexus board, so he's not like in your corporate circle. But you know. What's it probably? He's he's uh he's still in Pacifica, right? Yeah, Vegas is inside the Pacifica borders. Um, I would say then probably neutral, possibly leaning towards negative, but not necessarily. 
I, I don't know if I've described it to the rest of the group, but my family is fairly uh, patriotic in a sense. Not in a positive sense, but they are very uh, distrustful of a lot of the other territories. So, so probably neutral, yeah. I would say. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm gonna guess picture. like, and you can tell me if this you know rings true or not. But I'm gonna guess that if Celestine Stone met this guy at a party, she would probably want to like clean his clock. But in a business sense, well, yeah. <laughs> but that describes like half of the corpo leadership in the entire yeah country. Like, <laughs> I I don't think anybody in your family is getting invited to his high stakes poker tournaments. No. But they're not, like, enemies. Yeah. Okay. Um, then, yeah, I'm a lot less worried about our employer now. Because I get a picture decoration. of what kind of weirdo he is. And it's not the kind of weirdo that's going to be, like, a fanatic. At least I hope not. No, we got the funny other part of this is if, if Metatron had just thrown open the case and taken a full look at what's inside, you'd have a lot more information. But he just wanted a little peek, and then I had to be like, nuclear bombs. And I was like, nuclear oh, bombs. damn you, Peter! <laughs> you said nuclear. You didn't even have to say gang. bombs. You said nuclear, and I was like, uh-uh. Shadow wizard cyber gang. No, if I don't Omega, it's the, it's the fucking... Uh, machine house has no it's probably so some sort of machine that machine. needs nuclear power to run no i mean it's the not die machine that he has mm. the, like a uh, preservation bubble well we don't know well i'm okay with not this knowing true. it's not important i'm also okay with not knowing <laughs> all right i don't so... think our, i no longer think our employer is going to kill us so oh well, that wouldn't have mattered anyway. yes it, no, well the no, don't mean, say no, that, that would have mattered if if the if if the the job was a trap somehow, um, like, and you guys were trans, you know, transporting a live bomb to nuke Vegas, that okay, fair. that could be relevant. But you're not. Yeah, no, stuck. that's what I'm mad. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's like it's, when we get there, it's not going to be an ambush unless I roll poorly. He seems like a very boring corpo, which is well, what the, pay, the, the the get paid you know part is there. There there are maybe other layers you know to to how it works. Also, I like how. Well, actually, I don't know. That say what you want about about you know, rich old white dudes. But I like how Dallas said he sounded perfectly normal when I said that this guy's making you know, and and uh, uh, one to one uh, you know, life model decoys of supermodels and like I mean, trying I to make bunny girls. Real. Listen, I am on the side of anyone like, who's genuinely trying to make bunny kids. girls. I'm just saying. <laughs> mm, I don't know. All I could say is I the concepts of sentience and ethics and consent and it gets very messy so if a girl says well, that moment, she, has, she wants to be a real life bunny girl that means everything's fucking fine exactly no I anyway don't, I don't all, all i will that. say is i've lodged my uh guess with loth and i'm married to continue whenever everyone else is. <laughs> right, i i don't married. have a stake in it okay all right so claymore uh bring some some lunch to the blades you get up the burger boy, boy. Um, Wolf, I assume, is still lurking around in the rail yard. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't say you moved on yet, so. Um, then, yeah, I think before our nightly escapade, which at this point will probably be the last thing we do in legwork, because, uh, you guys have been, uh, killing it. I think there's been, like, one full miss all night. That was me, wasn't it? A couple partial hits. Wait, no, didn't Dallas get a full miss? No, I, no, I, I missed. Because I, I missed on, yeah, I missed Dallas. on calling Blue Steel. Pretty sure. Oh yeah. yes, right. That was a that was a full miss. That's right. I I forgot to mark the legwork. Okay. okay. So you were at 20, 2100 on legwork. Alrighty. Yeah, that's everything. Yes, that'll, that'll be our 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 last couple things. So, uh, first of all, because I love drama, <laughs> uh, Claymore, as you're sitting there, um, you are simultaneously pinged with the the notice that your two cargo packages are en route. Okay. So, uh, you know, you have no further uh, prep work, I think, for that. You're just going to wait and see who rolls up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
first of all, oh, in a uh, a you know uh, crappy camper van, uh, which has had several bullet holes and other scuff marks uh, spackled over, um, you are rolled up to with some guys. Uh, Sorry, I, I, Dal sent me a DM and I nodded like a fucking idiot. <laughs> That's Don't I worry, Omega, I do that as well. I just like, I'm nodding to be like message received and I'm like, wait, that doesn't <laughs> work. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, so uh, out of this uh, camper van comes uh, a couple of guys in, you know, uh, brightly colored. Uh, they're wearing full clean suits, but they're covered in like gang tags, basically. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, one of them speaks to you in kind of like, uh, you know, an English-Spanish pigeon. I will not do an accent. But, you know, he's just like, you know. Uh, you know, nod, nods it at probably Claymore as the biggest, scariest man here and is just like, hey, are you, uh, you, you know, friends of the Sapphire's friends? I was like, Claymore would be like, we be friends. All right, cool. Uh, we're lost. We're lost, Dragos. We need you to deliver this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know. All right, cool. Uh, here, here, you know. F- fl- flick something off like like his holophone or something like holograms to you and and has like a uh a, a, a contact information, a cell phone you're gonna look for, and it's gonna be like, uh, this guy's gonna come get it when it gets there. And uh, I know we're doing, you know, it's uh, you're doing a favor for a favor for a favor, but uh, you know, don't don't lose none of our our our, uh, our coke now, our cocaine. So it's already paid for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then as they, you know, open up the back and they start fishing up the the pallets, uh, you know, which are which are full of you know wrapped in uh brown or otherwise opaque paper, but. Very clearly, kilos of of something. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- I mean, they're they're in a pallet, so they probably got like an extra layer of like plastic wrap over them as well, cling film or something. Um, but as they're doing, um, oh, what is the appropriate level of ludicrous vehicle for Hoshiguma's folks to be driving? It's uh, uh, it's it's just like the the truck you get. Uh, the start of Phantom Liberty. It's a little smart truck. <laughs> what was that? The, the the what was that? I remember what it is, but yeah, yeah, you know the type. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Hoshiguma herself oh, and a, and a couple of guys roll up in these. Um, there's probably a brief moment of like you know, like the Spider Man meme where uh, Los Dragos the narco gang and Hoshiguma the arms dealer, you know, point at each other and be like, "Hey, who are you?" But, Claymore will stand in the b- middle of this and just be like, mm. "Okay, you do the the Chris Pratt rapper mm-hmm. meme, and everybody assumes that everybody is supposed to be yes. here. So uh, off these trucks, um, yeah, Hoshikaba hands uh, passes you four pallets, um, of just uh old, you know, U.S. Army surplus crates that have been like repacked, Damn. um." Judging by the way that they rattle, these are just full of guns and empty mags. Oh, someone probably did something stupid and needed to get rid of them, so he tried to give them fucking back. Yes. No. You 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 can connect the dots. Yes. Uh, Hoshikibu gives you four crates of, of hot guns, which have probably been used to do something very ballistically illegal, <laughs> and she needs them to go into the desert and never come back. Oh, cool. We're cleaning evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, unfortunately, <laughs> you have Claymore as a friend who is very that... good at dealing with illegal operations. Yeah. <laughs> That's also not the worst thing we've done by a country mile. No, I know. I just, I'm just saying oh, what no. it is. Yeah, you guys are, are, are. We're playing Cyberpunk. You guys are not no. good people, but you're good at what you I, do. If anything, I would say Claymore is like the second morally most correct of us. Really? Well, I guess it is. I'm. I'm in second or third. You got you got a, you got a code. That is five. true. I'm the I'm by far the worst. I killed civilians for fun. Yeah, I want to do that. I don't know what in your mind 
Odin is on that list. <laughs> I mean, I'd kill a civilian, so but I would only do it for shoes. a job or to keep something from going tits up. And uh, as 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 previously established, you know, if you want to keep one of the guns so that when you find Kennedy, you can break his kneecaps Ooh. with it, go for it. But yeah, um, they are at least all like unloaded, but they're just they're they're, you know, you 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 ask for a complication, so they're they're loosey and goosey. And and are and are loose packed. I am totally uh, gonna but, shove one of these barrels down his throat. Uh, you are definitely now approaching uh, pretty full in your container. Perf. I basically imagine you've got it like on two halves. Like you, you know, you want to keep the side doors yep. clear. So you've got like one side, which is, you know, the fur the furniture that that Odin, you know, bought up cheap. So you've got like I said. A a couple of sofas, a couple of, you know, folding chairs or folding tables set up. You can probably tuck, you know, uh, Claymore's armor case and the package in that side. And then the other half is just pallets of shit. Yep. Uh, would it be too hard to... Sc- I'm pretty sure we can rustle up a couple tarps. Yeah, no, that's that's fine. You can do that easily. No need to spend anything Yeah, else. I know, like, they're all covered and stuff, but it's just, it's just you know... It's just the thing. You want to cover things up. You can find how far you look into Wolf's Pass, Dallas. But all right, respect okay. for most of the group. Uh, Metatron hasn't actually done deep digging on any of you. Yeah. All right, I am going to take one final step away, and then we'll tune in for the the night thing, and then probably that'll be it for uh, legwork. So I'll be right back. I also encourage everybody else to take a break if you need to. I will actually. I'll be right back. I have paused the audio. I'll burb. We'll see if it pans out. I think if Metatron had to guess, he would assume it's some sort of like nuclear reactor like energy thing. And he's just keeping it cl- uh, on the down low because. Uh, uh, Pacific is not too fan of that. Either or, you didn't look. You, you didn't look full enough to see it, so we're just never gonna fully know. It's fine. Are you saying that to convince yourself? Oh, I'm so mad! I meant to be doing fucking runs in the event so I can get more fucking event drops, and I forgot. I should have that too, but oh, don't worry, I missed yeah. the entire event. But I'm almost done with India. Gotta go punch a god with another I'm, god. I'm almost to India. I have to punch a tree. Uh, I believe you guys can make it to make it, to make it enough time to. In my defense, okay. I have uh, I have her on the uh, on my GP account. Okay, what were you saying now, Axe? I'm saying I say they both got both got India. You probably make it to Tunguska in time. Well, yeah, I don't know about that. I say I believe you. If you ha- if you don't want to, that's entirely fine. I mean, I want to. It just I just really don't know if I'll be able to. I mean, it's also because in my I'll be very honest. In my JP account, are I have a bunch of I don't have a lot of servants, so getting an Avenger was very, extremely important to me. I have so many servants in my EN accounts. Let's go! Comma, interlude. I tried to win so much. Uh, I have Edmund, Nobu, uh, do I have all the Avengers? I think I have every Avenger. A lot of Avengers. Alright, well, I'm at three experience. What Avengers are there? I can't remember. 
There's loads. We're post summer comma. She exists. I have her. I have it three now. What the fuck am I so, looking at? Right. Right. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, I, I, just, have every event Edward, I think I'm going to be two cred uh, short by the end of this job, I think. Oh no, it's Black Park, Karen. Oh no. It's illegal. Yeah. Anyway, I am. Oh, actually, hang on one second. I take that back. I'll be right back once more. No, I have all of the Avengers. Uh, I'm still salty about not having all of the foreigners. I'm very annoyed at how bad my roles went this October. I mean, Malays. She's uh, uh, was she limited? Yeah, she's limited. Yes, all she's limited. limited so far. Okay, but she'll be coming back. They I think I, I think she had like multiple rate ups. Is why I didn't stress about it. She's got a few, and they'll come up with more. I mean, I'll be honest. She is the one I want the most because she's related to my favorite uh, Lovecraftian deity. Ugh, okay, now I'm back. Back. Sorry about that. Okay, he's back, back. The only Lovecraft god I would consider somewhat good? Or neutral. Uh, I mean, it was uh, HPL's own opinion. Take it, yeah, take it, take it what you will, but it was uh, HPL's own opinion that uh, Shub would side uh, with humanity against certain uh, stupider, yeah. evil, or outer gods. He loves us. He just wants us to mutate into well, children. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. The most absolute powerful uh, deities in Lovecraft are generally positive towards humanity or just dumb and would kill everything but he's dumb and bad and asleep all right okay i'm ready to unpause i'm here okay we're unpausing all right um did we want to spend a intel to reveal knowledge about the high roller yeah um uh... we have five still well, I, well the thing is it doesn't make any sense for claymore to reveal because he is very bad about um this kind of stuff. So I I'll do it for the high roller. You do it for the still roller. That's there's the yeah. high roller. Oh. I oh, fuck it's stupid. Yeah, it's their their VIP. You I can do it because I have an idea of what kind of person they would be. Yeah, if someone could spend the intel on the high roller that the the uh steel yeah. knights are guarding, I'd be appreciative. Uh yeah, someone else I should do it because Wolf's focused on the blade leaf right now, so um, I, I do. would say they are likely, I believe, if I remember from uh, session one or two, session two, would they not be a Ukrainian diplomat? Because I believe the Ukrainians were having negotiations at the, not, the Nagasaki hut? No, not Nagasaki. Nakamura. Nakamura uh, Hotel. Nakamura Hotel. Uh, if that's what you want to say, yeah, they could be that. Uh, that is European and yeah. could be a high roller. Yes. And SKR normally does security and bodyguard work. All right. Uh, I can generate a name for that NPC if you guys really want it. I think I'm good. Yeah, you, you can... Whatever's easiest for you. Yeah, it's pretty generic name, but it works. So we will say that that diplomat is Yakov Smirnov. No, <laughs> sorry, we did not. Are you okay? All right, you're you're sassing me tonight behind the name. I will manually type that one. Uh, we'll say it's Anton Kuzmenko. So they are a Ukrainian diplomat uh, who is, you know, doing what diplomats do and taking some free time to go to Vegas for a weekend. Yeah. Okay, all right. Close up those extra tabs. All right, so uh, that night, you know, 24 hours remain type mm -hmm. thing. Uh. Claymore, you are on station, mm -hmm. uh, but you are not going to be directly going with Wolf because he is sneaky. You are not so sneaky. I mean, I have Mother Duck. You can come with me if you want. Well, I'll leave this up to you. Do you want me to come with you? Um, This is your lead. 
and we're mostly just trying to find out the information. So, yeah, I was. Th- uh, you do you do have a full run of this rail yard, so anywhere you would want to be posted up, Claymore, because you do have a rifle. Um, yeah. Um, I know I was saying it internally during Aaron's game, but I will see if I can get into a position of Overwatch. Maybe on top of maybe on yep. top of a car, or maybe some sort of tower. Uh, there are definitely probably like yeah, there are not towers, but there would be like um cranes basically to pick up you know uh containers and and cars and move them around mm-hmm. so yeah you can you can get up on top of a of a crane i do have li- i do have sight i do have cyber eyes with light magnification so i should be yeah so you can see just fine despite the fact that uh i mean you know you're still technically inside the mega city you're just in a industrial area so like everything to your like western you know uh, half circle is just neon glow. You know, just just lights firing up into the sky. Uh, but there are, you know, intermittent, you know, spotlights and, and other kinds of light rigging to keep this place illuminated at night. Okay. Uh, before Wolf's off, I would like to open a comm call with him, as they do in Cyberpunk. I have encrypted comms. on. I have encrypted on my okay. um, cyber comms, so he right. can maintain uh, one-to-one communication. Yeah. I have yet, and I have encrypted uh, just a normal comm, so. Yep. So you Same. have probably like an earpiece, in, right? Yeah. Uh, the other two guys, are you going to be in the rail yard while this is going on, or do you want to be somewhere else? I don't know where else to be. I'm going to be at the rail yard because I'm going to see this through. Yeah. I'm chilling. Buddy, I mean, I'm probably just monitoring systems to make sure no one attempts a uh, cyber interference. You can chill out and, and cruise the Matrix. I'm on enough energy drinks. I'm fine. <laughs> Careful. I wrote a rule about that. In the, in the yeah, movie. I saw that. If you take five in a single day, you take two wounds. And every time you take another one after that, you take another two wounds. But there's no... Well, you're disoriented, but you can just... You can huff cigs all day. Chain smoke, baby. Yeah. That's not as... as uh, good a, a, a strain recovery, but it's part of the system. Both have their ups and downs. Alright. So, uh, in case of, like, crazy tits-up activity, the other two player characters are on, but mostly this is going to be uh, the Claymore and Wolf business. Alright, so, uh, Wolf, you're going to try and approach the uh, the, tri- the flatbed. Yep, uh, if will... you don't have some special move for this. I will covert entry. Okay, yes. And then do that. Uh, now that it is nighttime, I will say for free, especially with uh, Claymore on Overwatch, both of you can see that the uh, the Bloody Leaf guys are now uh, being a little less subtle. Like, they're still not wearing any identifying markers, but they're in, you know, tack vest and, and body armor, you know, uh, light helmets or, or, uh, or other headgear, uh, but they are, like, openly carrying, you know, submachine guns or compact carbines. Nice. All right, we have nine. So I get one hold. All right. Okay. So I pretty much I'll be doing, I guess, act under pressure to get this done. Probably, I guess, before the next uh, next more aware and awake uh, shift comes through for their their guards. Yes. All right, yeah. So there's there's about about a half dozen of them in a loose circle, uh, and they're they're around the flatbed. There are some 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 spotlights. There's some uh, motion sensitive lights as well. You know, as like an anti theft mesh. But that's that's about it. So you're gonna sneak right up to that flatbed. Yep. All right. Yes. Roll act under pressure. Is cool. Under pressure. Down on me. Down on you. But oh, don't go. Alright, so it's seven. Alright. I offer you a worse outcome, a hard bargain, or an ugly choice. Hmm. 
Okay, okay. Uh All right. Um as as you're going to make a move, you you thought you had it lined up perfectly, but as you're getting close, uh you hear, you know, boots crunching on gravel. It's the next shift. They're here early. Um so uh you can either uh make a hard and fast run and just like hop into that flatbed um and be out of sight or uh you can pull back and reassess but that means that you're gonna have you know fresh faced guards on your way how you want to i'll do this? uh i'll press forward all right hard yeah, and uh, uh slip under you activate you know crouch sprinting and MGS just, force yeah. crack sprinting. That that was always great. Was great. I, act, I activate the word uh, Warframe. You know, slide jumping. Pull a jump, baby. Yeah. yeah, and you just hop up into uh, this flatbed. Uh, you don't make any sound or anything while it's going. Um, and like I, you know, the the old shifter distracted by the new shift. You hear some, you know, some some brief conversation. Oh, hey, you're here early. Eh? Bar closed early. We're here, you know, and back and forth. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Sneezed. Mm. But yeah, so um, you know, the the last shift crunches away, and the new new guys, you know, take up their positions. Uh, you know, uh, you you are in amongst the the loose cargo that is is tied down. Uh, you know, strapped onto this flatbed. The thing under the tarp is is just you know half a tick away. To slowly kind of get back into position underneath the tarp and creep forward. All right. Uh, so you wish to, to slip under that tarp and look in? Yeah. Do I have to okay. another move or. Let me see. I'm debating whether that's. No, you're just, you're just in there. We're not assessing. Uh, I do believe this will be be one more act under pressure, yes, because you are still acting under danger. Danger, right. danger. Or to avoid danger. Because, I don't know, you could draw snake eyes and, like, do something terrible. Nope, that is the nope, opposite of snake eyes. Other way around. Eyes. Yeah, no, okay. Uh, you're you're in it, and uh, you you are the knight. You walk between the non-existent raindrops. So, yeah, you just, uh, you know, speaking of, of Metal Gear Solid, you, you know, go full prone, just like the old Solid Snake would, and shimmy your way up under and uh, get up under the tarp. And you do find that actually there is uh, quite a lot of space under this tarp because what is uh, bolted, you know, strapped down to the back of this flatbed under a, you know, sensor-dampening tarp is a... Uh, A TK421 uh, model uh, Tsuchigumo multipod tank. Oh, <gasps> I want it. Uh, so uh, there is a, a, a big uh, eight-legged, uh, you know, like I said, it's it's a leg tank, a, a, a walking tank. Uh, this is a model that is produced by uh, Suzaku. Um, uh, what sort of uh, sensors or cyber eyes do you have? Uh, none. Okay. So uh, it's th this. You're under a sensor dampening tarp, so it is dark as knobs. Uh, you can have like a little pen flashlight if you need it. You're the infiltrator, so that's fine. But um, uh, if you're looking at this thing under like flashlight, uh, you can see it's got like a. Uh, it wouldn't be like. Yeah, it's it's kind of like like. Um, been repainted over uh gray and you can see the the original like uh forest green coloring underneath it uh this is clearly a used suchigumo um judging by the scuff marks and bullet dents um you're not exactly sure about the armament you know um uh depending on how much you know about uh suzaku security's uh uh you know product lineup um you might remember the spec specifications of this thing, but by flashlight, you can see that it's still got the uh, 
uh, twin uh, forward machine guns. Uh, it's got light machine guns for anti-infantry. It also uh, still appears to have the uh, spider cord launchers. Mm. Um, uh, it does not appear to have the normal... You're pretty sure this model normally comes with, like... Um, Normally has like servo arms for like uh, removing obstacles and fences. Those appear to have been removed, but uh, it does have you know peeking like a scorpion's tail under the tarp. It does have the full tank turret, which has a uh, light anti-armor gun on it. Uh, a very a very short range, you know, uh, compact tank cannon, not a like heavy MBT gun or or rail gun or anything, but. Oh shit! So who's smuggling this in? This is under the bloody leaf tarp. Oh, oh, that's bad. If I uh, yeah, I think I'll use... use some uh, some Let's see. tags. Let me see where's. And uh, the sadly, my MC sheet only has uh. Cyborg and weapon tags, not vehicle tags. So go ahead with what you were going to say, Wolf. Uh, there, one second. Um... So you said that pretty much the it's been like kind of scoured of identification and stuff like that. It's just been painted gray and stuff. Yeah. Also, it's been used, so who knows where this came from or how long ago this was used. Yeah. If you relate that to Claymore, the, the, I, I would say the Suchigumo is a uh, it's an old reliable model, uh, one of Suzaku's uh, earliest entries in multipod tanks. All right, yeah, then definitely, who knows where it came from? It's not worth yeah, it's, it's not worth it's not anywhere. worth calling rapier over. Yeah, I'll definitely relay that. I'll relay Suchigumo back to uh, actually Claymore. Probably bad who has it. But... Well, no. Well, my immediate thought is I still could call Rapier. She is on Suzaku security forces. But, like, maybe we, I can ask her if there's any exploits we can use, a backdoor we can get in. Take it before they take it before they can use it. I mean, honestly, you guys still have, what, like four or five intel? Yeah. Uh, you could just at any point one. use reveal knowledge to say you've got the spec documents. You don't need to. You don't necessarily need to call. Okay. Mechanically calling what you would get from calling rapier would just be like the intel anyway. So I could basically say until okay. I have the dogs on the Shijigomo and I know how to, and that would give me the ability to like what like get an ASIC like, some sort of backdoor or override or something. Yeah, you'd get a you would get a plus one forward on the actions you take for this knowledge. So you would, okay, you know if you were gonna uh, hack them, if you were gonna run okay. them. Uh, oh, please let me hack the tank. <laughs> the Sujigo is supposed to be uh, semi-autonomous. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, I'm, I'm gonna assume, I'm gonna think, guess it probably has the cramp tag. Um, there's space for probably one pilot and one gunner slash passenger in the turret. Um, actually, no, it's probably one pilot totally. The, Theoretically, the turret, could the someone pilot remotely. Yes, it is supposed to be semi-autonomous, so it it has or should have again if it's factory fresh, it should have an onboard expert expert system to like follow remote commands and you know identify Excellent. targets and shit. Oh. All right, I'm gonna hack this fucking tag. Well, it is working at your tank, house. Though, overdone. Anything be... you want me to confirm about it, Claymore? Uh, you already checked its armaments. It's old, so it's not nothing really any anything new there. Um, hang on, I am I am rolling down my list. No, nothing we can like. I don't know if it's actu uh, actually. Would he be able to check to see if it actually has a working power cord and live and it is loaded with ammunition? Yeah, I could. He could check. Yes, I could try and get to the console, to a console. Because, like I said, if it has, if it's able to move and fire, that makes it makes it a problem. But if it's not, that just means it's being moved. In my personal opinion. All right. Uh, well, okay. I if you want to uh, to to closely study this this object, 
Uh, that's going to be an assess, Wolf. Ah. Okay. Because, like I said, you are doing this by, you know, flashlight light. Well, I, guess. I will definitely assess it. I'm a little sad that you guys uh, did your, your due diligence smartly to figure this one out, but... Uh, <laughs> Yes, this was if 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 the bloody leave was involved, um, because basically the way this works is I have a spectrum of guys that could be involved, and I'm not going to say it's going to be the guys you didn't research who come get you. You know, I'm not going to be mean like that, but um, oof, there may be Ooh. there. There's oh. the snake eyes. Yeah. Them's the snake eyes. Uh, do you have anything for uh, procking on a miss with assess or anything? Uh, no. Okay. All right, we move up the clocks, the appropriate clocks. Sorry, Wolf, I got greedy. Nah, no, fine. no, it was, a, it was a smart question. I thought about just giving it, but I'm like, no, he's under a tarp with just like a little flashlight. Okay, all right. So, it's... Pause. Is that what we, how we want to play this? Yeah, yeah, no, this is this is how we want to play this. Um, all right, Wolf, you are you you start looking for like power hookups and stuff. Um, you know, Claymore can tell you over the line that this thing uses uh. Like ultra high capacity uh, or uh, ultra density capacitors, so it's just pure electric. Um, so you like go out and around looking for for cables. You lean under one of the big legs, uh, and as you flick your flashlight, uh, the tarp lifts up behind you, uh, and there are two uh, bloody leaf guys who uh, are, are standing there and look like they were mid conversation about, yeah, yeah, we've got a multi-pet tank in here and then they pull it up and they just see you with like a little flashlight in your mouth what do you do um time to scamper all right Flee. all right yeah it's like uh dart down between and slit the legs and try to get out the other side of the okay uh Let's Papers, see. please. You Unfortunately, I don't actually plan have uh, Plan B. Ah, uh, you don't have. Okay, you don't I have don't that have that one yet. Saddle out. Okay. Uh, in that case, just uh, act under pressure again. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out of Dodge. All right, so it's another seven total. Okay, I mean, um, you can you can get away. Uh, actually, no, yeah, the way the way it works is it's it's a worse. Oh no, I, yeah, it's it's offer a worse outcome. So you can always volunteer to be to be caught. These guys could catch up to you, um, but you can get away. But you're gonna you're gonna start a Scooby Doo chase through the rail yard with you know, at least those two guys, possibly more guys after you. What do you want to do? Uh. Hmm. Also, this is probably it's a little late now because of the roll, but it's important to remember you guys can always help or interfere when possible. I would like to. You can roll plus. Lux. I would like to um, help, definitely. Whatever. Um... I'd like to interfere on the. Uh... So <laughs> what I want to do is I want lady? to. Uh, I will give them a chase, and I'm going to try and lead them uh, towards uh, Cross Nexus Security. Okay. And yeah, then uh, right the when I'm, they're about to run each other, I'm going to use my one hold to kind of like duck duck to the side and have them run into each other. All right, yeah, okay. So uh, you start uh, start this merry little chase. Um, you know, the two guys that, that saw you, you know, come tearing around the corner of the, the flatbed, 
disclaimer, you can see this by now, by the way, these two guys. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, there's a guy here. Yeah, anyway. Uh, so about half of them, you know, uh, three of them uh, form a little triangle and start sprinting after a wolf, um, you know, only able to do just enough to keep him in sight, but not enough to catch up to him. Um, the other three, like, all circle up around um, Claymore while you're watching, probably through your rifle scope. Uh, you can see one of them, you know, grab their handset and just... Uh, Metatron's on... Something um... in their radio. No, I'm on comms. So can you do anything uh, to like... block communications? Uh, that's what I was going to do for my interference. Well, you can't you can't interfere with people you don't have links with. That's other player characters. Um, uh, you yes, can, I can, Omega. What? I have a skill for that. Oh, can you actually roll? Well, what do you roll yeah, for? I'm that allowed to use links? style instead of links to help or interfere. You can I you can still only because uh, NPCs don't roll. Uh, so. Okay. I guess I didn't um, understand. Yeah. Can I roll to fuck with their communications, though? Mm, yes. Uh, I think you even have some tools for that. What would be the right... I know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Uh... Yeah, you're trying to do this quickly. Go ahead and roll me Act Under Pressure, Metatron, to stifle their comms. Okay, what uh, skill is it you use again? That's normally cool. Ooh. Um... All right, I'll still do it anyway. Definitely not one of my better skills. Nice. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, uh, how much got a nine. Do you have no zero. Okay. Nine. Okay. Um. Well, that's still a partial. Unless thing. I can use Sims because attacking, but that that's up to you. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Then, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, uh, basically, how I think this is going to work is you can you can set up a jamming bubble. You you can flood all the local radio frequencies so they can't use their little Oh, yeah. Little I was just going to flood the local uh, radio frequencies with Ave Maria playing as loudly as possible. <laughs> uh... And then yes, you fa you found the the worst outcome or the hard bargain because that means that every radio transmitter yeah. in the local area is gonna suddenly start picking up Ave Maria. Ave Maria, you the loudest possible one. Oh, actually, this is a good question. Um, do you have any uh cyberware or gear that has the jamming tag? Me? Yes, I do. Okay, him. Uh, then yeah, you can just do that. It's good. You still, I, I still think the roll to do it fast enough is good. All right, so my um, arm, uh, my arm has jamming on it. Uh, so I would like to point out uh, the jamming tag says anything that it doesn't have the encrypted tag. So Claymore, your uh, your link to Wolf is still yeah. good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, suddenly, this is uh, not being subtle. This is just everywhere. Yeah, suddenly, everything in like the next like uh, you know. Four or five block radius. The PAs are suddenly, you know, uh, broadcasting Ave Maria. All of the, the, you know, Claymore again. You can see all the bloody leaf guys are just looking at their handsets, just like, what the fuck? Um, Wolf, you hear the strains of Ave Maria behind you from those three guys' handsets. Uh, and then also in front of you, as you, you know, run towards, there's a, there's a you know, a security booth or checkpoint for Cross Nexus. Uh, and you're gonna spend your uh, your sneaky man hold to like get out of sight. Yeah, to avoid okay. guards at that point. So, all right. Yes, fair enough. Uh, Claymore, anything else you want to do about this situation? No, I don't want to start firing guns quite yet. No one's actually open fired. Um, I will just be keeping an eye on the situation. All right. Uh, since they are now in kind of like opposite directions, who do you want to keep an eye on more? the crew at the flatbed or the three guys who were chasing Wolf and are now about to have a run-in with security? Hmm. I trust Wolf will be able to get out, and I have a calm line directly to him, so if he says help, I'll be able to switch. So I will keep a guy eye on the guys at the flatbed. Yeah, probably gotcha. the last message you got from Wolf was avoiding tangos. Mm-hmm. 
We're evading tangos. So, uh, Wolf, you are nearby um, as, uh, you know, uh, the the three, you know, Bloody Leaf guys run up to, like I said, there's a little, there's a little security booth checkpoint, you know, probably like for like an access road or maybe to access one of the cranes or something or a, or a cross a train line, you know, normal security stuff. There's, there's a couple of, uh, of, you know, uh, they're wearing, you know, uh, like cross nexus uniforms like you were earlier, but they are still just normal rent cops. Um, so th- three bloody leaf guys with, you know, uh, handset radios on their tack vests, broadcasting Ave Maria run up as two security guards with handset radios on their tack vests um, <laughs> and probably another like broad spectrum radio inside their booth also playing Ave Maria step out. Um, and then there's just like violent isn't the right word because everybody's really confused by this music thing. I love and, it. And they can't go any higher in the chain of command. Like, the, the buck has to stop here. So you have, you know, two Renacops and three terrorist gro- goons um, who, like, have a very confused, slightly tense standoff, basically. The two Renacops have, like, their hands on their sidearms. Um, you know, the, the three terrorists are still carrying their, like, you know, compact SMGs. But they just have a really weird argument about, like, hey, you see a guy run past? We covered a guy. Are you, it was his music. I don't know what this music is. Do you know what this music is? No, I don't know what this music is. You know, um, and basically, you have an opportunity to slip away if you want or cause any other kind of mischief um, because they are going to go in circles for probably the next 10 minutes um, or in, unless, uh, you know, Metatron gets the signal to drop the jamming. Um, and are are not going to be able to pursue you any further. I will, I'll, I'll vacate and head back to our uh, train car. All right. All right. I will message um, Metatron to to uh, to uh, to drop the hail mary. Yep. I will drop it, uh, and right. you will hear audible chuckling over the uh, the uh, radio. God, I missed this. Yep clicks off there's there's little there's a little squawk squeak um and yeah basically you know as as wolf goes away now now they that turns into a new argument where they're arguing about like well now it stopped so what the fuck does that mean (laughs) um claymore you you watch that now that those guys are able to actually get their radios to work you know one of them finally clicks his handset on and like very exasperatedly you know um Probably the person you see talking is probably the the oldest one. Um, I've I've actually written down you know the the like bloody leaves background lore in the in the mm-hmm. new doc, but um, th- they're like a lot of you know radical organizations. They've got like a couple different generations. Most of these goons seem like they are you know younger. Uh, the the person who's actually talking in the radio a lot seems like older. You would guess they're probably a uh, either a Singularity War vet or uh, you know a veteran of some the border conflicts and the collapse to come out after. Mm-hmm. You know, got some scars, maybe got some light cyberization, and just with the most exasperated expression, they just you know talk in the radio. Uh, do you have cyber? I ears? do with white hearing. Okay, uh, let's see. Is it just white hearing? Uh, let me double check here. Or wide frequency, I should say. Uh, uh, where'd I put it? Actually, there's there's not a. Uh, there's not a tag for like long range viewing listening anyway. Oh well, so. yeah, it's wide range. Excuse me. Yes, wide frequency, and then I don't think there's a magnification for ears. No. Um. So well, you've got the ears. That's fine. Um. Yeah. So you you can like vaguely on the wind pick up from like the squeaks and squawks that just like. Okay, some of the some of the, some of the kids said they saw a guy in the tarp. Um. I don't know, but then all our radios got jammed. I don't know what's going on. Um, come on back for a for a regroup here for a double shift. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna sit up with this on all night, and you you know vaguely hear through the radio some some you know some soldierly bitching and moaning, and he says, "Yeah, I don't care. Get the fuck back here. This is weird. The package is." I'm too so important. tempted to put Ave Maria back on. 
Um, and then, you know, that guy, like, switches the frequency on his handset and basically says, uh, I wanted to say Johnson, but no, that's a, that's a loaded name. Yes, that name. is a very um, loaded name. Simmons, where the fuck are you? I, listen, do you see a guy? Okay, then get the fuck back here, okay? You have a job to do. Simmons, do I need to come down there? No, 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 sir. Okay, good. If you're not back here in 15 minutes, don't ask me what happens. Clicks off his radio. Um. So, yeah. Uh. So, any opportunity you probably had to fuck with these guys without violence, probably blown for the night. Because, mm -hmm. um, like I said, they're, they're going to call back the other shift of guards, and they're going to sit, like, double shift until the sun comes up, it looks like. Um, the three guys who chased after Wolf lost him. They extricate themselves eventually from the Renacops and come back. And they... Uh, they are posted up for as long as you want to watch, you know, very tense, many smoked cigarettes, you know. At some point, they do send out one son of a bitch for a coffee run, you know, comes back with, with four stacks of double shots of espresso, you know, kind of a thing. Uh, and, and, you know, they, they are on alert all night because they... They understand that they were just fuck with, but they have no further evidence of the fucking, <laughs> so they're just gonna, you know, <laughs> stand around in circles with guns ready and be very tense about stuff. Well, they'll put them on edge. Uh, well, I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, wait, is Aaron back? Uh, that sounds, that like, sounds a no. like a no. Okay. Well, when Aaron gets back, uh, claim will ask Wolfie he wants to continue with the RC cars. But other than that, uh, I love doing these jobs. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever. I don't think I'm ever going to retire. <laughs> um, let's see here. Axe, you have any ideas for the? Actually, Axe, where is your character right now? I believe Odin is with okay, the package. What's the package? Okay. Run it back. All right. So, uh, Claymore is going to uh, call Wolf and ask if he is okay to continue on the mission towards the um, RC target. Or if he wants to fall back. Or GCC, uh, I, can, I can continue on. Alright, cool. Yeah. Alright. So, you slink away to the Rio Grande Combine cars. Da -da -dum. I will likely stay on comms overwatch as I am. At some point, Metatron, you were probably, you know, uh, some of the, the little blades probably bust your balls a little bit about, you know, either picking some better music or, you know, hey, put the tunes back on. <laughs> as they're all just, you know, sitting around, like I said, they're they're playing poker for bullets and, you know, like throwing rocks at empty energy drink cans. No, that's fair. You know. I will be very cordial with them, as I always am. But yeah, so uh, let me see. let me look at the exact frame case in the chart because I think technically these is all it's kind of the same location still. So infiltrator, sorry, covert entry. When you carry it, a secure area alone. Uh. Oh, also, uh, which which one do you have, Wolf, Face, or Cat Burglar? I have Face. Okay, so you gained an intel back, because you spent your one hold. Ah, okay, that's good. More intel! Uh, yeah, let's, let's have you roll covert entry again to, to secure a new area, because RGC is going to have different security methods than the Bloody Leaf will. Oh, Jesus. Not again. What the fuck? Oof. Well, D1, what did we do to you? It's time for the snake eyes. This is the second snake eyes. I guess we have, I, I guess the clock is full then. <laughs> fuck. No, no. The clock's not full because it does alternate. 
Uh, this does mean that you're going to start with the action clock at at, at nine o'clock at twenty one hundred though, and the legwork clock's up to twenty two. So you are at you know ten to midnight. This I think is your last thing. Um, yeah, I should spend the entire. Yeah. So. Uh... Hmm, da -da. Yeah, this is not one of our special threats or anything. This should just be da -da -da, normal. Mm. So, uh, Wolf, as you approach the spot where the RGC cars are being stored, and they are being stored together, uh, you know, you're you're running through the line and uh, can see uh, what all they got. Uh, uh, they also appear to be a little on uh, high alert. Yes, because they also got hit with Av Maria. Yeah, no, they were inside that bubble for sure. <laughs> um, and it looks like uh, they have... Uh, so despite the fact that as Metatron dug up, these are just supposed to be, you know, technicians and workers, mm -hmm. right? Um, and they're all dressed in, you know, Big, bright red safety vests, jackets, you know, uh, uh, impact resistance crash suits and stuff. Um, uh, several of them have whipped out some, uh, you know, uh, slung up some shotguns. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, and, 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 and other such uh, items. Uh, you definitely see a lot of, you know, spanners and pry bars uh, dangling from their belts ready to go. Uh but also, uh, they appear to have uh, gone into the cargo, and uh, they've actually run up some drones. Uh, there are some uh, light survey drones uh, actually in the air overhead now, um, scanning the immediate area. Uh, they're pretty obvious to spot. They're they're you know they're like I said they're by RGC, so they are you know bright construction yellow or safety orange. Um, but yeah, they've got these little you know. Uh, normal quad rotor drones to like you know fly over locations survey shit you know uh check out shit for like firefighting search and rescue resource spotting and stuff and uh yeah there's a few of those up in the air what do you want to do i whatever whatever he wants to do would like to hit help i will prov i will a um provide um i'll be a spotter that's the best way to be able to put it. Yeah. Can provide a distraction if need be. Oh, I can. I can provide a distraction just by pulling a goddamn trigger. Well, let me rephrase that. I can provide a more non-violent distraction. Nah, they're already on edge. Okay. If only you had uh, yeah. trank rounds in your rifle. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Wolf right now will just kind of find a spot to kind of keep watch on them and see if Wait, they actually, do kind of calm down a bit. I could take the drones off of you. I'm going to see what they do like after a while. This... See if they calm down and stuff. Trying to get in, in there when they're on, on high alert is probably not a good idea. Alright, well it sounds like you're closely studying a, a, a person, place, or situation. Yep. So that would be assess, and Claymore can assist you with this. So Claymore, please roll plus your links with Wolf. I put typed in roll. I was your about wolf to do links. a dumb. Your Wolf link, if you will. Eh. Wow. Okay, I'm getting physical dice. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. That's genuine bullshit. I'm getting physical <laughs> dice, <laughs> even though we're gonna <laughs> at some point we're gonna stop rolling. Very I know soon. we are, but still, that's bullshit. It's the principle of the it's thing, the yes. the principle of the matter. I do not help. And he did not need help. I get trigger a another move. Ten. Uh, the action clock is up to 2200 now. Oh, my. I, I mean, I feel like I think it's th that's suitably tense. You know that there's a fucking, you know, walking tank involved. There's terrorists. RGC hey, is, is a little freaked out. It's our final mission. It's going to be a good one. I don't even. I wasn't even supposed to be here today. <laughs> and there's probably like unknown unknowns. Yeah, that's my problem. It's like 
Right, Good. Let's see. More tension. I mean, you guys, the thing is, even if I spring an unknown on un unknown on you, you guys have like six intel against. You can just be like, aha, I knew that you'd know that I'd unknow. Here's how I planned for this. But okay, uh, first. Uh, All right, so starting, I have to a, yeah, three holds, I, have to I got do, 10. Huh? Yeah, I have to do a move for Claymore. Okay. I mean, I have a very simple one for Claymore that's going to appeal to all his worst problems. Claymore, as you're uh, as you're watching him through your scope, um, you know you've got super ears and stuff. Uh, so uh, you hear your uh, you know gravel and dirt crunching, uh, and you know uh, you hear the sound of a of a steel toed boot kind of kicking the ladder up to the crane you're on. Uh, if you glance over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Uh, you see a flash, you know, a flashlight peering up on there. It's like, yeah, doesn't quite see you, but it looks like there's a a, a tech or a security guard or something who's come to check out the crane because everybody's, mm -hmm. you know, being all weird tonight. Mm -hmm. So, what are you gonna do about that? Ah, uh, if. Hmm. I believe you do still have the directive where if you solve a problem with violence that you don't have to, you do get XP. I do like I do like XP. Well, let me double check. Let me double check. I'm pretty sure I have it. But let me actually make sure I do. While you're thinking, yes, I am violent. Uh, yes. Uh, while you're thinking about what you want to do there, uh, Indeedy Wolf, you have three holds, so. All right, I think the first one then is who or what is my biggest threat in this situation? Technically, your biggest threat in this situation is still um you do not know what the exact status of that tank is. It's probably only like a few, you know, 100 meters behind you in this mess. <laughs> If if you start a shooting war with RGC or RGC starts a shooting war with you, let's be realistic, um, and you know the bloody leaf decides to cut loose and just you know cause a ruckus in this train yard, that's bad. That'd be real bad. All right, so what Claymore's going to do is he's going to maintain Overwatch. But if that guy comes up this ladder, he's getting a Claymore fist. I won't kill him, but he's not going back down for a long time. All right, well, you know, we'll see how that turns out uh, when, when Wolf is done with his questions. Uh, what do I notice despite the effort to conceal? Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, shockingly, it seems like RGC is on the up and up. This is a normal train full of tools and mining equipment. Uh, as far as you can tell, the main thing that they seem to be concealing is that um, they're executing this under basically what's a military grade ex ex uh, escort. Uh, they have probably twice as many technicians as you would need to move this cargo. Um, and again, all of them are rocking like, you know, they've got uh, like stun gun sidearms or shotguns um, and are, you know, wearing uh, padded suits. Uh, and uh, definitely tucked into this shipment of, like, you know, heavy-duty grinders and power tools and other shit. Uh, there are uh, several more crates of things like the drones that are, you know, up and around going on scanning. Like, they, they are... Uh, this is a normal shipment, but for some reason, RGC is, is riding way more hot than they normally do. I mean, okay. Um, I guess last that. question then is, uh, how can I avoid trouble or hide? Mostly avoid trouble. I'm assuming it's just going to be a head back now. Yeah, if you just don't get any closer and back up, these guys have no incentive to move further away from their cargo. All right. That's what I figured. I'm going to start heading back. All right. All right. I'll, I'll message uh, um, Kali more that I'm doing that. All right. Now can I mess with them? You're gonna be a trainer with these guys for like three hours. I know. 
That's don't, funny. Don't, don't fuck it I up. do also relate to Claymore that they seem they seem legit. A little overmanned, but legit. Mm. Claymore, as you're thinking about these thoughts, clonk, 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 clonk. That's work boots coming uh, up the ladder. Uh, Claymore says, uh, just puts into the meshing, hold one. And I'm going to get in possession that when this man ha- heads pops up, I'm going to grab him by the neck, pull him bodily up, and put him in a fucking sleeper hold. That sounds like mixing it up. You want to use violence to seize control. Hang on. And he is technically armed. He has a big flashlight he could book you with. Hang on. Where's my dice? Where's oh. my dice? There they are. That's normally meat, but I'm pretty the sure you could roll sense yes, for, I have this. Arms for this. Uh, here we are. Oh my god, I have a question. Yes. What is the maximum range I can output a signal to? Uh, do you have any particular tags about being long range? Like, do you have yes, I satellite do. relay and stuff? Cybercoms, I have satellite relay. Uh, then yeah, technically no. You can, uh, you can, you know, uh, uh, access any any reasonable distance. So. Could I broadcast a signal to every open, unencrypted channel in a mile radius? Why? Well, he hasn't told us what he's doing, yeah, so he probably. gets to do it. No, no, I'm, I'm thinking about just so they don't know for sure that it was because of us. Because if I do it within a mile radius, then there's plausible deniability that something happens next door to us. Yes, you can. You can get some 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 very uh, wide range effects and and. Uh control yourself so all right well you rolled an 11 on mix it up hey guess what you achieve your objective and you don't pick any badness so uh yeah no uh you uh crunch this guy up like a like a pretzel (laughs) put him in a sleeper hold and just you know let him flop down onto the control deck on the crane Mm -hmm. uh yes he is taking a night night nap he has a big you know mag light flashlight and uh a, a radio on him and that's it and a hard hat is this just a common ass radio yeah, it's just a handset radio. Nah, I don't need to know their fucking comms. All right, but he's taking a nappy boo. Hopefully he doesn't fall off, fall roll, roll in the sleep and fall off the crane. But that's not my problem. I scooch on down. I'm heading back to the train yard. Can I mark experience for that? Is that violent enough? Yeah, yes, yeah. no. Uh, that's that's why I asked very carefully what you were doing. If you just, you know, if you held your gun on him and went like, just, just walk away, that will be play hardball. No, this was, you just... Like I said, you, you scrunched him up and dunked him in a trash can. I believe this is when I ask the GM this question. If I give in to my base or instincts, can it uh, account for my daredevil tag? Daredevil. So... One of my okay. uh, motivations is adrenaline junkie. Yeah, you're a thrill seeker. Um, adrenaline... Yeah. I guess it would it would depend on on for me to let you mark experience. I would have to know like what what thrill you're hunting. So if I were oh, I just want to terrify everyone in this yard. Uh, I was going to disable every drone in the area with my drone jammer and then play a song broadcast in a mile radius. I mean, you could still do that. I don't actually think that that would count as as thrill seeking. There's not there's not really a thrill or a risk there. You're just being a little shit. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I'm still really tempted to do it. Nah, well, it you know, sometimes you you shouldn't. Note that Wolf has violent also, yeah, say, and I, I didn't I and I didn't attack the. Uh... Yeah, I, I was just yeah, reminding myself of everybody's yeah, motivations, right. and I was going to bring that up. Trust me, if it wasn't if I if I had a silencer on those rifles, I would have just dropped started dropping dudes. Actually, can I get a silencer on this gun? Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, well, you're yeah, broke, so no, that no. Is correct. I am broke. If you had cash, yes. Uh, if you wanted to spend a gear happy. point on it, you could say you have a, a silencer, Man, but I don't. This point. You've only got a, a couple of those. I think you only still only have two. You might want to save those for yeah, the yeah. job because I also am definitely uh, going to spend an il- intel point. Oh no! Okay, wait, no, even... uh, never mind. No. Oh, uh, no he's good. Would you have shared the layout of the tank plans with the rest of the group? 
I mean, I have. Well, did I actually spend the point on Intel on the situation? No. no, you did not actually uh, request the the tank layout. Um, I do not know oh, if Wolf and Claymore have brought up the fact I that they will... have a tank. Yeah, everywhere. I haven't brought that up yet. Oh, I thought uh, I thought uh, Wolf mentioned it over comms. I relate it to. Yeah, Claymore. Claymore, we, Claymore has encrypted calm. That's how we we're able to get through to jamming and stuff. And I said I specifically oh. calmed to Wolf. Yeah, they have, they uh, said they have a one, uh, a one to one yeah. backup, not TACnet. Okay, uh, then I would probably ask you to if you found anything interesting. Uh well, yeah, no, I see no reason not not to. I will relay that it's a um, old uh, Suchigumo t- uh, multipod tank. When we're able to actually interesting like this, Claymore does. Uh, you know what? Uh, we got plenty of intel. I will. I will spend that intel no, on no. the okay. uh, Suchigomo uh, specs. Uh, Claymore is just has this, like one of those, as well as those old documents he has because, you know, guess what? He's worked in, he's worked, he's he's a vet in the war and fucking works for SSS. So he has a lot of knowledge and access to um, SSX uh, tech, um, SSS technology. Yeah, and so keep in mind, uh, you, you take a plus those, one uh... forward whenever you. Uh, uh... I use that i have a, I have a question yeah, that so. just lasts until the end of the mission right like okay yes and also it well uh also it's only the first time you roll because it's forward okay. not is it just claymore or is it anyone in the group no uh it says take plus one forward to exploit the opportunity offered by this information that is not okay, have so any uh, in pronouns group. in there so whoever exploits the mm-hmm. information because I'm going to hack that tank. I hope. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm not yeah, sure. sure. That sounds good. Fine to me. Uh, and, unless you want to go, unless you want to go crawl up in there while they're under double guard, you can't do that right now because it's not. Uh, uh, this is one thing I think that'll be covered by by revealing information. Uh, it's you know it's a multipod tank, so it's got uh, eight legs. Uh, they do have a wheel setting for like highway speed, but it's very slow. Uh, Claymore, you know, you you remark uh, on the thing that uh, you know Wolf mentioned. You, it's supposed to have like two servo arms, you know, like uh, almost like scorpion claws or something to like uh, act as like you know fence cutters or uh, to remove obstacles, you know, um, that appear to have been detached. <laughs> so it doesn't have all of its crazy buttons, um, but it does have its full, you know. Uh, Eight individual legs. It's got a a raised turret pod that's got an auto loader in it, so it can automatically feed, uh, you know, fire. And it's got two uh, a paired light machine guns, and does have uh, spider cord launchers. Not really, so that it can do anything, you know, cool like climb buildings. This this one's a little too heavy for that. Uh, but it could definitely climb along the train cars. Yes. Also, it could, you know grab things or people and move yes. them around, pull them in, bind them up. Smash them. Yeah. Excellent. I know how I'm entertaining myself tomorrow. I am slightly concerned. Uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, Claymore, you, like I said, you would, you would know that, like I said, they're supposed to be semi-autonomous, so there can be a... There can be one human pilot uh, who usually plugs in straight away with MMI. So you you know you pilot it with your brain, um, or it's semi-autonomous, so it can act you know either uh, with direct you know encrypted orders, or you can just issue it very. Like I said, it's first gen. It's one of Suzaku's first gen techs in this. Very general orders like guard here, shoot those men, you know, move here, kind of a stuff. Let's grow. <laughs> uh, but it can execute orders without any further input. Yeah. Let's scramble its IFF. Oh, these people suck. Kill them. Activating murder.exe. But yeah, so uh, it sounds like you guys have uh, done everything. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, since uh, your soldier... Yeah, I'm going to fuck for... these uh, Canadian terrorists up. They messed with my friend-neighbor roommate. Uh, friend-neighbor assets. Thing. I guess is uh, how much gear intel we have left. I believe you have two intel, or not two intel, two gear, and how much I intel? Four. Just keep track. Four now, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think with that it's four. I have that in my two hold. I think we're good. Uh, actually, I would like you to jot down. You have two unfilled segments in the legwork clock. 
Okay, I'll mark that for Pretty late, but that's still a plus two on the Listen, roll. we rolled a lot of snake eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's I don't know it if... happened at all during the complicated <laughs> part, when shit could go really wrong. Though I will like, say on the flip side, I think we did roll like two, at least two box cars. I know also. you rolled yeah. at least one box yeah, car. I, yeah. I, was, I kind of dislike how the, uh, I guess, complication spiral goes, where it's like it demands then more rolls to then where it then just penalizes you even if you don't. Even if you get partial success sometimes, it doesn't kind of penalize yeah, you, mean, with, you don't... with uh, partial success because you get to pick your poison. Yeah, you you don't have to worry with partial successes about the clocks moving at yeah. least. But generally, the way that these systems are designed is supposed to be: I ask you what you do, you do a thing. Did you get a good clean hit? Okay, I I introduce a new complication, ask you another thing, and we go down the line. Uh, that said, at there were several times when you know Wolf or anybody could just be like, "Nah, I'm not dealing with this," and just yeah. you know used to get out of there but that means you don't get any more information yep. but okay good session all right next time will be the train job Woo. Woo. So if you uh, gotta kill a kill an oni yeah going to uh to you know well also uh technically yes and oni but like earth spider specifically that's why it's suji gumo mm -hmm. uh but yeah uh i guess that's everything i have to say i'm recording don't forget to like comment subscribe mm -hmm. y'all so I'm going to stop her down now. Good night. Good night. Good night.